Time travel is often seen as one of the greatest scientific topics of the modern era, with hypothetical arguments and futuristic theories connecting some of the most fundamental questions of the universe with some of the most profound discoveries in the quantum world. Although physicists and academia regard the concept as being completely impossible in the real world, and a violation of entropic theory, there still exists a small handful of people dedicated to the topic in such a tremendous way that they end up putting their lives on the line for what they believe in. With one such man known as the madman Mike Markham, he had very much put his life on the line for everything that he believed in, and would become the centre of one of the strangest time travel mysteries on the internet. Back in 1995, Michael Markham had been working out of his home and seemed to suffer from a long bout of unemployment. Having spent a few years studying for an electrical engineering major, Markham believed that as long as he could find a way to fund his private work, he would be able to stumble across a great invention that would allow him to get out of his financial situation. At the age of 21, however, Markham began to grow increasingly desperate, with many acquaintances remarking that Markham's health started to deteriorate. It was around this time that Markham was messing around with a simple electrical design known as a Jacob's Ladder. A Jacob's Ladder is a simple electrical device with a focus of demonstrating the movement of electricity when paired with rising hot air. According to the physics description, the transformer located at the bottom of a Jacob's Ladder creates the potential difference between two wires that are positioned vertically and parallel to each other. Due to this potential difference, the electrons repel each other causing them to jump from one wire to the other parallel wire to try and get as far apart as possible. The separation of electron creates an arcing visible spark that connects the two wires horizontally. The spark then heats up the surrounding air, which acts as an imaginary third wire since the air acts as a conductor once heated sufficiently. Because hot air rises, the spark begins to rise with the air causing it to ascend vertically up the middle point between the two wires. When the spark gets to the top of the wires, the spark dies, cutting off the connection between the two wires and starting the cycle over again at the bottom. According to Markham, once he got his Jacob's Ladder working, with the use of his CD laser to help reduce the air resistance between the two wires, and create a continuous arc of electricity without the connection being severed, he claimed to have witnessed something remarkable. Markham claimed that the electrical arc began to form a vortex that distorted light, and appeared to have been almost three-dimensional in his appearance. Curious as to what effect this vortex would have had, he tossed in a sheet metal screw, and watched the electricity stroke the screw, before causing the screw to suddenly disappear and vanish into thin air. Originally, Markham believed that he discovered a small primitive form of an electrical death ray, but then after a few seconds had elapsed, he watched the screw suddenly reappear and drop down from the wires, as if it had suddenly been transported back in front of him. Instantly, Markham theorised that what he'd actually witnessed was the properties of a time machine, he believed that the sheet metal screw had been transported through time, and suddenly reappeared once time caught up when the screw had been transported. Unfortunately, before he could make another attempt to test out this new theory, the compact disc laser he was using for his experiments suddenly caught fire and burned up. Given Markham's desperation and increasingly worsening financial situation, he quickly wished to re-attempt the experiment, but instead to scale up the experiment in the hopes that he could send himself into the future to retrieve the winning lottery numbers, before finding a way to jump back in time and win the lottery. Without wasting a second's time, Marcus then went to several electrical engineering stores to purchase much stronger transformers, but he found that to scale up his experiment, he would require a transformer that would have cost him over 20,000 US dollars, Due to his financial problems, he soon left the stores feeling deflated. Several days would pass before Markham would come up with another plan. 
After remembering that there was a local power station nearby, he secretly travelled to the place at night and discovered an unprotected St. Joseph line and powering station within King City, Missouri. After spending several hours looking the place over and scouting the area, he found six inactive transformers, each weighing over 300 pounds, and capable of generating several times the energy he required for his experiment to succeed. Once home, Mike Markham connected the transformers to the house's power outlets, and constructed his new and improved Jacob's Ladder, several times larger than the previous, and got ready to jump into the stream of arcing electricity. Once the power turned on, however, the overloading of the electrical grid caused by the transformers led to a massive brownout in the area, causing half of the city to suddenly suffer from electrical damage, ruining several hundred home appliances and shutting down the electrical grid for several hours. Even worse for Markham, his six transformers each overloaded, and were no longer functioning for him to conduct his experiment. Through a strange coincidence, Mike's roommate would attract a visit from the police after getting into a dispute with the next door neighbour. According to the police, Markham was being blamed for supposedly shooting out the glass screen door of the next door neighbours, despite not having been anywhere near the area at the time of the dispute. Frustrated by the accusation, Markham told the police that he had nothing to do with the event, and that the only person who owns a BB gun in the home was his roommate, who most likely shot out the glass door. In retaliation against Markham, the roommates then told the police about the Transformers experiment, and explained where they could find evidence of the experiment that caused the townwide damage. After law enforcement officers looked into an outside shed where several of the stolen Transformers were being kept, Mike Markham was arrested and taken to jail. After trial, Markham received a total of 60 days in jail. Although Markham was found with over $13,000 of stolen materials, and having caused damage to nearly several hundred thousand dollars worth of electrical equipment and home appliances, Markham would only receive two months due to the rather strange comments he made during his trial. According to the arresting officer and the judge, Mike Markham had confessed to the crime, and said that he had successfully discovered how to construct a time machine, and was only trying to send himself into the future to retrieve winning lottery numbers, to help fund and build his own private research lab. Once the judge heard Mike Markham's case, the judge realised that Markham was severely mentally impaired, and appeared to have been suffering from some form of delusion or illness, thus resulting in him receiving the minimum required time for his sentence. Shortly after the trial, the local newspaper the Kansas City Star would run a story on the Mike Markham case, with a tongue-in-cheek tone in regards to the story, that would result in the local popularity of the entire experience. The story would receive enough popularity while Mike Markham was in jail, that Art Bell, the host of the paranormal and supernatural radio show known as Coast to Coast AM, would reach out to Mike Markham to hear his side of the story, Hoping to receive additional funding for his research into time travel, Mike Markham agreed to go on the show to help build up a following. While on the show, Mike began telling his entire story, and his thought process behind the time machine he was building, mentioning many well-known theories surrounding time travel, such as the strange electromagnetic field vortex generated by the Philadelphia experiment. As he told his story, however, Many of the callers did not believe that Mike Markham actually caused a blackout across his small Kentucky town, and claimed that the arrest was a hoax to sell his story as being actively covered up by the United States government. Despite arguing with many of the callers, it was not until an unknown caller joined the air and began supporting many of Mike's claims that listeners began to believe what Mike was saying. As it turned out, the caller on the radio show was Mike's arresting officer, who helped to provide additional details around their case, as well as what it was like seeing Mike's personal lamp, mentioning that Markham was found with an electronic cigarette light made from the broken parts of an old microwave oven, 
an electronic piggy bank Mike had designed and programmed himself, that kept track of the money he placed into this small container, alongside many other strange homemade inventions and contraptions that Mike was hoping to patent and sell prior to his time machine invention. By the end of the show, Mike received several calls from fellow time travel enthusiasts, wishing to give him ideas on how to design and engineer the technology, as well as several thousand dollars worth of funding for his private time travel laboratory. Now having more than enough money to retry his experiment, Art Bell asked Markham if he could instead try to work on other inventions, or work to rebuild the time machine. Markham admitted he would use all of the money on the time machine, and that he'd be sure to bring his cell phone with him on his journey to document the entire event. Several months later, Mike would contact Art Bell to tell him about his new and improved time machine, created with the help of others who believed that a transformer made from copper lining and quartz crystals would help to create free energy once he figured out a way to tap into the unlimited infinite zero-point vacuum energy. Mike then said that his design would be able to use over 3 gigawatts of power, an amount of energy equivalent to powering almost a million homes within the United States. Believing that Mike Markham was entering a stage of delusion, Art Bell attempted to convince Markham that if he jumped into the electric charge of the Jacob's Ladder, he could end up seriously hurting himself. Of course, Mike countered Art Bell by saying that the Jacob's Ladder was nothing more than the beanstalk from the Jack and the Beanstalk legend, and that he should be perfectly safe. Unsure of what else to say to Mike Markham, Art Bell then asks Mike that before he conducts the experiment, he lets him know so he can go over to his laboratory to either witness the first conclusive evidence of time travel, or talk him down from the daring end calling Mike a madman for even attempting something so dangerous. Loving the name, Mike decided to go by the name of Madman Mike Markham and continue with his experiment anyway. Before the show ended, however, Mike then gave all of the listeners his personal home address so that they could witness the result of the experiment as well. It was around this time that several groups of people began showing up at Mike's house to seemingly troll the guy over his strange time travel obsession. In one event, Mike remembered that during a party with all of his new time travel friends, he'd stepped away from the main room to talk with some people, and when he returned the couch had suddenly vanished. Mike began accusing and questioning people, believing that someone had moved or stolen their couch. Several people then started to tell Mike that the couch must have teleported, and disappear through time from a suddenly open time vortex. Mike then looked throughout the entire house, but was unable to find his couch. Several years later, a listener of Coast to Coast AM called into the show and asked Art Bell about the story of Mike Margham, and whatever seemed to have happened with his time travel experiments. Art then remembering this strange story, told the viewers he'd look into the story and figure out whatever happened to Mike Markham. Later, Bell remarked that the phone number that used to belong to Mike Markham appeared to no longer work, and that close friends of Mike had no idea where he went, suddenly disappearing one day after he mentioned that he was going to work on one last experiment. Intrigued by the sudden turn of events, listeners into the Coast to Coast AM began calling into the art show, and telling him about their encounters with Mike, and where they believed he could have ended up. Before the show ended, one caller seemed to have had an even weirder theory surrounding Mike's sudden disappearance. According to the caller, there was a body that police had discovered back in the 1930s on a California beach. After an autopsy report, it appeared that the man who fit the description of Mike Markham had been crushed to death from all angles, as if he'd been placed inside a tightening metal tube. Even more strange, the man's body was found with strange plastic and metallic devices that looked eerily similar to a modern-day cell phone. Given the impossible to explain similarities between the body's description and Mike Markham, along with the fact that Markham claimed that if he conducted his experiment, 
he'd bring nothing but his cell phone to document everything. Bell and his listeners began to wonder if the body recovered back in the 1930s was actually Markham's body from the distant future. The sudden twist in the story led to the fascination with Mike Markham hitting the internet in total popularity, with many different places, websites, articles and YouTube channels talking about the event. Although it's nowhere near as exciting as the time travel theory, the truth behind Mike Markham's disappearance is far less fantastic than people realise. Interestingly enough, Mike Markham had been a frequent member and user of a website known as Paranormal Forum, and would post there quite frequently, updating his followers about his time travel theories and new time machine designs. After some financial problems, however, Markham decided that he would move away and live in Hawaii to provide himself a much needed break and to find a new home to live. Once he moved to Hawaii, however, everything that's happened over the past few years hit, which caused him to lose all of his money and face an even worse financial situation. To this day, Markham is homeless, living on the beaches of Hawaii working to save up enough money to one day return to the mainland of the United States and begin his time travel experiments once more. Thousands of years ago, hand-sketched illustrations first started appearing on old parchment. In all the world's greatest discoveries, few are more exciting than the ones found in books. Hundreds of these books have mystified even the smartest researchers and scientists for decades, hiding within them long forgotten secrets. A few days ago a post started to make the rounds on social media, detailing that police in Turkey had discovered a mysterious book. Photos were then shared to groups, where people then tried to translate what the book was about. A man by the name of Ayas said its rough translation details the mockery of man and other religions, saying that one part of it goes into detail about how those with good hearts won't prevail, and that there's higher forces at work. Another person by the name of Lorna backed this up, and said that this book shouldn't be read, detailing that they think it's written in the Hebrew language, and that it's actually a book that helps someone to summon higher powers. Interestingly, they detailed that going back, such books were not hard to find, and that many authors would detail how to contact these higher entities, believing that if they made a pact with them or summoned them, they would in turn get rewarded. Another translator commented that if it was real, it would have been similar to other books that focused on dark forces, saying that it discredits the belief system in the Middle East. One person said the following, it would make sense that a book of this would exist. After all, this isn't the first time that something like this has been found within this region. Years ago, people who lived in this area believed in higher powers, especially things like forces that would overpower man. I can't read the translation, but I've read some of the comments on here who've said that they've translated it, and they note that it seems to mock everything that was happening in this region years ago something that you would expect to see in a book like this. Another user though was on the edge, saying that there were some inconsistencies. They said the following, The book is actually beautifully made. One of the reasons I'm suspicious is because of the wording, and how it's laid out. My Hebrew does need work, but it goes hard on certain religions, wording that I don't want to repeat. It also goes into detail about the land and how everything will fall. The issue is people could have just created this from scratch. The wording is worrying, and it could have been done by someone who's not happy with how things are in their country. Although many questions still surround this book, there's other books that have been discovered that talk about similar topics. One is the Book of Soiga. In the early 16th century, an unknown author wrote a written work about demonology. This treatise, entirely written in Latin, would eventually be known as the Mysterious Book of Soiger, otherwise known as Old Uriah. 
No one would have known anything about the book if it wasn't for an English man by the name of John Dee. He was an accomplished mathematician, philosopher and astronomer, who also worked alongside the Queen of England, Elizabeth I. Once he got hold of the book nearly half a millennium ago, he dedicated his entire life to unlock its mysteries. The first part of the book was easy for Dee, who could easily read Latin. Within it, he discovered passages about the wildest spells, magic formulas and conjurations, and structures involving angels and demons. Yet, it was the last part of the book that really tripped him up. 36 pages of some cryptic tables containing Latin letters. He knew that it must have been a code, potentially with a message. With that realisation, he was determined to uncover it, no matter how far his methods could reach. He consulted his close friend named Edward Kelly, who was an occultist and spirit medium. Heavily involved in the supernatural and mystical, he immediately set to work with Dee. Instead of trying to spend hours closely interpreting the Latin characters, they instead summoned an archangel, or one of the highest ranked angels. As the angel named Uriel was present, the two friends asked him about the meaning of the final part of the book. Usually known as the Angel of Wisdom, Uriel spoke his words through Kelly's mouth, yet his answers only brought forth more questions, as well as a haunting omen. He said that the book came forth as soon as Adam entered the Garden of Eden, and that it could only be understood by Archangel Michael, the leader of the army of God against forces of evil. Even more chilling was Uriel's statement that the Book of Psycho was cursed. If one were to uncover the meaning behind the tables and their codes, they would surely pass away two and a half years later. As time passed with fates lingering in the air, Dee was never able to find out the meaning. The book even disappeared in the late 1610s, thought to be destroyed or forever lost. It wasn't until 1994 when a copy of the book was discovered in the British Library in London, among a heap of other ancient writings. 400 years after Dee passed away, the book had finally resurfaced. It was found by none other than an American historian and professor named Deborah Harkness, who studied John Dee and wrote her PhD thesis on his life's work. As it turns out, there was a second copy in the Bodleian Library at Oxford. Upon its momentous discovery, many occult fans and cryptographers rushed back to figure out the final part. After many years of deciphering, one man by the name of Jim Reeds found the answers in 2006. As both a historian and cryptographer, he found an algorithm for understanding the tables, which revealed lists of magical incantations astrological words and even more angels and demon names. So did he pass away in two and a half years? As a matter of fact, he's still alive today, but whether the curse remains true, we'll never know. Reed has never managed to interpret the tables, as the curse says its victim must do. Perhaps within the tables, a secret and mysterious message still lays there. Scientists are always making new discoveries in space, with NASA also coming forward every year and documenting new planets, galaxies, exoplanets and various other enigmas. A few years back on December 1st, NASA's Stereo spacecraft watched as something massive entered into our solar system, detailing that the spacecraft detected a huge wave of charged material shooting out of it. Those who watched the video said you could see huge plasma and solar ejector hitting Mercury, noting that other objects in the nearby area were also lighting up as well. On top of this, those who saw the objects described it as looking like a large circular or cylindrical object. One individual who made a video on the findings said this, It's cylindrical on either side and has a shape in the middle. It definitely looks like a ship to me and very obviously is cloned. There's absolutely no explanation. 
what object in space cloaks itself and doesn't appear until it gets hit by energy from the sun. End quote. The NASA telescope revealed to scientists on the ground that the object seemed to appear out of nowhere, and due to a flare going past Mercury, it started to reveal the massive objects that appear to be just hovering there. Once the video was released, it led to people to put forward their theories for what they thought it was, and they ranged from rogue asteroids, to a planet that hadn't been detected by NASA, and also mysterious cloaked objects that somehow made their way into the solar system. Some users went on to say that this isn't the first time that strange objects have been detected by NASA spacecrafts, and that every year these mysterious objects can be seen around our sun, with some of those being observed hovering close to the sun for several hours, before flying off at incredible speeds. Although the photographs are interesting and normally always spark debates online, NASA and other scientists have said it's nothing to worry about, and that what you're actually seeing is just Mercury from the previous day. The photographs were given to the United States Naval Research Laboratory to analyse, and engineer Nathan Rich did for his interviews with websites in order to clear up what had been seen. Rich said the following, When this averaging process is done between the previous day and the current day, and there's a feature like a planet, this introduces dark artifacts in the background where the planet was on the previous day, which then show up as bright areas in the enhanced image. End quote. Astronomer Dr. Heather Cooper had this to say. The scientists have not managed to subtract the image of Mercury. The technical guys are saying the problem is when you try to subtract something that's moving, the pixels end up blending into each other. It's imaging processing that they haven't got their heads around. No way could it be an alien spaceship the size of Mercury, because Mercury is the size of our moon, and we would know about it. End quote. According to Russ Howard, head scientist of the NRL group, they also agreed that what was seen was just an artifact that was left over from the raw HI-1 telescope data. Interestingly, NASA said the following on their website in regards to mysterious flying aircrafts. Does NASA search for extraterrestrial life? One of NASA's key goals is the search for life in the universe. To date, NASA is yet to find any credible evidence of extraterrestrial life. However, NASA has long been exploring the solar system and beyond to help answer fundamental questions, including whether we're alone in the universe, the agency's astrobiology program focuses on the origins, evolution and distribution of life beyond Earth. From studying water on Mars, probing promising ocean worlds such as Titan in Europa, to looking for biosignatures in the atmosphere of our cosmic neighbourhood, and planets outside our solar system. NASA's science missions are working together with a goal to find unmistakable signs of life beyond Earth. Does NASA search for or study unidentified aerial phenomena? NASA does not actively search for UAPs. However, through our Earth-observing satellites, NASA collects extensive data about Earth's atmosphere, often in collaboration with the other space agencies of the world. While these data are not specifically collected to identify UAPs or alien techno-signatures, they are publicly available and anyone may use them to search the atmosphere. While NASA doesn't actively search for UAPs, if we learn of UAPs, it would open the door to new science questions to explore. Atmospheric scientists, aerospace experts and other scientists could all contribute to understanding the nature of this phenomenon. Exploring the unknown in space is at the heart of who we are. End quote. The focus of our research into space now seems to be heavily focused on discovering life. Scientists believe that the meteors that have brushed up against the atmosphere of the Earth may have transferred microbial life to Venus. Recently, traces of phosphine have been detected within the clouds of Venus. This is an extremely significant discovery, as on Earth, phosphine is a byproduct of life. 
Of course, the most exciting conclusion to draw would be that there is existing life on Venus, though this is not particularly plausible. The suggestion instead, however, is that the phosphine has been transferred from Earth to Venus. The Department of Astronomy at Harvard hypothesized that the asteroids might have brushed by the Earth's atmosphere, moving some microbes along with it, therefore explaining their presence on neighboring planets within the solar system. Currently, it's estimated that over 600,000 asteroids have brushed by Earth's atmosphere. Scientists have rightly pointed out that before we can attempt to explain extraterrestrial life forms this may have resulted in, we must first figure out what's within the upper atmosphere of Earth. We know very little about this terrestrial life, but these microbes are being transferred around our solar system, such as within Venus's atmosphere, thanks to the asteroids grazing our planet's atmosphere. If we aim to continue this research, the exploration may need to start a little closer to Earth. Investigating the microbial life within the Earth's upper atmosphere, at an altitude of an estimated 52 miles or 85 kilometers. One of the most difficult to explain disappearances has had several private investigators wondering if the local police did enough during the investigation of a man named Daniel Robinson. Daniel Robinson, a young man of only 24 years, grew up in a large family of four children in Columbia, South Carolina. Throughout Daniel's entire life, he'd been an avid outdoorsman, often going camping, spending time in the wilderness, and using his free time to play music while going on hikes throughout the nearby countryside. Back in 2019, Daniel Robinson, eager to get a job that allowed him to continue to explore the outdoors, finished his time at the College of Charleston and graduated with a bachelor's in archaeology. Although he hoped to pursue his career in academia and work at archaeological sites from around the world, due to his hand injury he was unable to find prolonged work in the field. Daniel's injury was caused by a strange birth defect, in which Daniel Robinson had been born with his right hand and forearm completely missing resulting in a large stump slightly past his elbow. Without letting his disability get the better of him, Daniel continued to look for an outdoors job and landed work for an engineering firm known as the Matrix New World, which primarily handled performing inspections and management for the drilling and installation of new water well systems. By 2021, Daniel Robinson moved to Tucson, Arizona, and was on the second day of his job when he seemed to have suddenly disappeared off the face of the earth. The last known person to have seen or interacted with Daniel Robinson was fellow pump technician by the name of Ken Elliott, who claimed to have worked with him on the 23rd of June, sometime around 9am, but noticed something really strange about Robinson's behaviour. According to Ken Elliott, as they were working on the new well together, the workday was just beginning, and since Daniel Robinson was new, Elliot figured that he would make casual small talk with him as they continued their work. At first, Elliot talked about the heat and the weather of Tucson, and asked how Robinson was getting used to the changing climate compared to South Carolina. Robinson replied casually, but seemed to be genuinely disinterested in what Elliot was talking about and appeared to have zoned out several times throughout the conversation, as if he was in deep thought. Elliot would give an interview to police about the encounter, describing Robinson as appearing to have been mentally distracted. He was just looking off into the desert. He had a very, very distant look in his eyes. Whenever he turned around, I would look at him and look into his eyes. According to Elliot, he assumed that Robinson could have taken some form of medication or recreational substance and was mentally impaired at the moment, saying the first thing I thought was maybe it was a substance or something, but his pupils were not dilated. From that standpoint, everything appeared to be normal. Then I thought this was a medical condition or something. I wasn't too sure. At this point, Elliot began to worry that there was something wrong with Robinson, 
that would require him to call in his co-workers to make sure that safety regulations were maintained. Before contacting anyone, however, Elliot continued to watch Robinson for more of a sign of a mental impairment before reporting anything unusual. I kept watching him but he just turned around and looked off into the desert. After less than an hour of working together, Elliot explained that Robinson suddenly walked to his car without saying anything to anyone, sat in there for a while and then left the job site without a second thought, and while still staring off into the desert and acting strangely, Elliot would say the following. Then he just turned around and walked back over to his jeep, and I assumed he was going to get something out of his car. And then he just opened the door, got in, sat down, put on his seatbelt and then just looked at me, and then waved at me and backed off and took off. Assuming that Robinson left because he was feeling unwell, Elliot paid no further attention to the interaction, and waited a few hours before calling his co-workers to tell them that Robinson had left early, believing that Robinson would have already called ahead of time to let them know he was taking a sick day. Oddly enough, when Elliot called in, no one else had heard from Robinson that day, and began to worry that something was wrong. A few hours later, the local police station, the Buckeye Police Department, were notified of Robinson's disappearance by the workplace. At the end of the workday, Elliot decided to follow Robinson's track while in his car, and discovered that they seemed to continue down to a dirt road, attended in a T-junction. Rather than taking a left at the junction, however, taking Robinson back into Phoenix, Arizona, the tracks appear to have gone off to the right of the junction, which would have taken Robinson's jeep out further into Sonoran Desert. The following day on the 24th of June, police were sent to Robinson's residence to check up on him, but received no answer. Despite believing that Robinson had possibly disappeared and was in trouble, the police didn't believe that they had a valid enough reason to enter the home, and decided to wait until the 7th of July before they would get a warrant, nearly two weeks after his reported disappearance. Once police entered the house, it became apparent that Robinson hadn't been inside for a while, and that he and his car were nowhere to be found for almost two weeks since his disappearance. Immediately after discovering this, the Barkai police station ordered a search and brought together UTVs, cadaver dogs such as walking on foot overhead drones and the Civil Air Patrol, with the help from Phoenix Firebird helicopters. By this point in time, Robinson's friends and family from South Carolina travelled to Tucson, Arizona, to help aid in the search, checking over an estimated 70 square miles from where Robinson's car tracks were last seen. Oddly enough, Buckeye police detectives claimed to have gotten a ping of Robinson's phone, but were unable to track the device for some unknown reason, but believed that it could have been caused by the phone having shut off after running out of power. After nearly a month of searching, on the 19th of July 2021, an overturned jeep was discovered in a ditch within this 70 square mile searching area. Oddly enough, the car had been in a location that was claimed to have already been searched. The Barkai Police Department provided a statement that they believed that the car could have been in the ditch from before the surge, since the location of the car was below the horizon viewpoint, and could have been missed by drones and people searching by foot. Others, however, believed that the car must have been hit several times, and then placed in the ditch as it had not been seen on previous searches and the person who found it claimed that the car must have been new, given the fact that it was very clean compared to other material left in the Sonoran Desert. The man who found it, a local rancher by the name of Brandon Shelton, provided the statement that he believed the car was new, because it was clean and because had it been in the area for over a month, his cows would have already have found it and licked it since cows are inquisitive creatures and always lick everything they deem out of the ordinary. When detectives investigated the crashed car, they found that both of the airbags had been deployed, and the seatbelt had been worn, 
but no body was found inside or near the car. The only other sign of Daniel Robinson being anywhere near the car was when they found his work boots that were smashed underneath the car. Even more peculiar, the car was located less than four miles from the work site. The police would also describe another strange fact, in that it appeared that all of the objects left inside the car would have been useful for Robinson, if he had ended up in trouble. The report would detail the following items. The car contained Robinson's clothes, phone, wallet keys and bottled water, a t-shirt, jeans turned inside out, shorts, orange work vest, boots and two socks. The car and the surrounding area were searched, but no blood or signs of Robinson was located anywhere in the area. On the 31st of July 2021, a human skull was discovered within a few miles of the location, but was later proved by investigators not to have belonged to Daniel Robinson. The official police investigation believes that Daniel Robinson had experienced something traumatic that led him to drive out into the Sonoran Desert, crash his car and then walk on foot, leaving behind his clothes and personal belongings for some unknown reason. When detectives got access to Robinson's cell phone and looked at his text history, they discovered that a week prior to his accident, he delivered some food via Instacart to a woman named Caitlin. The police then discovered that at the time of the food delivery, Caitlin and her friends were drunk and decided to invite Daniel Robinson inside to play video games. Several days later, Robinson would show up again and send a series of texts to the woman saying that he loved her. Caitlin then replied and told Robinson that she felt uncomfortable and didn't want him to show up at her house and that they would not be hanging out anytime soon. Frustrated by this, Robinson returned to her home a few days later. He did this unannounced. Caitlin would then text Robinson to leave her alone. 33 hours later, Robinson would vanish. Police believe that Robinson was most likely suffering from issues given his new move and the end of the relationship with the random woman and decided to go into the desert to end his life. Unhappy with the official investigation reports, Robinson's family would hire a private investigator to look into the events more closely and to uncover what really led to Robinson's disappearance. Almost immediately, private investigator Jess McGrath found evidence of foul play in Robinson's disappearance. According to McGrath, using GPS data of the phone and car, He'd uncovered that the Jeep had gotten into multiple accidents within the span of time of Daniel leaving the worksite and the car ending up at the bottom of the ravine. The vehicle's data also showed that the car crashed an estimated four hours after leaving the worksite and the airbags then deployed but the vehicle drove another 11 miles. After the next 11 miles, the car was involved in another accident with evidence of a paint transfer caused by the collision of another car. What's strange is that the car's data shows that after the airbags had been deployed, the ignition to the car had been turned on an estimated 46 more times during the last 11 miles. To this day, Daniel Robinson's body is yet to be discovered, but Jeff McGrath believes that Robinson was the victim of an impossible to explain attack and his car was left behind and moved to the bottom of the ravine to throw investigators off the trail. Mars has long been a place of interest. NASA and other space agencies are gearing up to send humans to the Red Planet, hoping that one day we may even call this place home. Interestingly, in recent years, various probes and rovers have found some interesting things on the surface leading to photographs being shared around, and theories to be put forward. One photograph that was captured a while back shows what looks like large marks on the surface of Mars, along with an object at the end that appears to be curving off at an angle. When the images were first captured, it led to people sharing their opinions on what they thought this object was, along with some pointing out that there appears to be two objects within this image, 
with both of them making a sharp turn. It's hard to guess how big these objects are, along with how big the tracks are that they've left behind, but as some have mentioned they must be quite large in order to be picked up by the probe. One user said the following, You can see this thing turning, also it looks to be quite big. Not sure what we're looking at here, but I don't think this is a rover, because you can see two of these things close together, and there's never been two rovers within that distance of one another. End quote. Others have suggested that there's things happening on Mars that the rovers may have missed, leading some to scan through these old Mars photographs in the hopes of finding something interesting. Although NASA has said that Mars and its atmosphere are too harsh to hold life anymore, noting that the surface of Mars is constantly exposed to high doses of cosmic radiation, there's others who have speculated that every so often it looks like there's things that appear to be moving on the surface. This isn't the only interesting discovery. NASA said that the Curiosity rover found evidence of Martian bacteria. Only a few years ago, NASA made an incredible discovery, in which the initial signs of life on Mars arose for NASA astrobiologists and research scientists back in 2004, and then again later confirmed back during the landing of the Martian probe in 2014. The private space agency originally saw signs of a methane plume ejecting from the surface of Mars, and began to quickly theorize its implications as an organic molecule of which only finds natural formation via the creation of a variety of bacteria. After many sleepless nights, engineers of the space agency worked to send a Martian rover, with the capability of testing the Martian surface for additional organic molecules. Later in 2014, Martian rover Curiosity began collecting evidence of methane traces in the Martian atmosphere, and made a startling discovery. The Martian rover found that the methane on Mars grew more concentrated by season in the Martian atmosphere, and directly correlated with the Martian seasons overall. This led researchers to believe that this correlation between concentration by season was additional proof to the hypothesis that Mars contains some form of life. Methane is also an organic molecule, and the majority of methane on Earth also correlates with our seasons as certain bacteria and microbes eject this organic molecule into the atmosphere during summer and autumn seasons. Similar to what the data shows in spikes of methane across the Martian atmosphere. Although definitive signs of life have yet to be observed on Mars, the odds of this observation seem to be more and more promising with the passing years, as Curiosity uncovers additional complex organic molecules, and continues its drilling process to locate biosignatures of life. This has led many researchers to theorize that the formation of these bacteria could have taken place over millions of years, as well as the fact that there could have been at one point in time, far more complex life on the surface of Mars, before the complete removal of its atmosphere, leading to a number of extremophiles still existing on the Martian surface today. Another NASA image that's often used by people to suggest that there's life on Mars is this one, showing what appears to be large streaks on the surface. NASA even covered this on their website by saying the following. NASA photographs have revealed bright new deposits seen in two gullies on Mars, that suggest water carried sediment through them sometime during the past seven years. Michael Meyer, lead scientist for NASA's Mars Exploration Program, said that these observations give the strongest evidence to date that water still flows occasionally on the surface of Mars. Liquid water as opposed to water ice and water vapor known to exist at Mars is considered necessary for life. The new findings heighten intrigue about the potential for microbial life on Mars. The Mars orbital camera on NASA's Mars Global Surveyor provided new evidence of the deposits in images taken in 2004 and 2005. Michael Mullin of Mullin Space Science Systems said that the shapes of these deposits are what you would expect to see if the material were carried by flowing water. They have finger-like branches on the downhill end and are easily diverted around small obstacles. 
Malin is principal investigator for the camera, and lead author of a report about the findings published in the journal Sciences. The atmosphere of Mars is so thin, and the temperature so cold that liquid water cannot persist at the surface. It would rapidly evaporate or freeze. Researchers have said that water could remain liquid long enough after breaking from an underground source to carry debris downslope before totally freezing. The two fresh deposits are each several hundred meters or yards long. End quote. Each year, thousands of people record mysterious videos, leaving us with more questions than answers. One interesting video was just recorded above Texas. The individual who took the footage, Marianne Bozo, sent out a post asking if anyone had seen anything strange above Houston. The video was taken two days ago on the 3rd of March 2022, and it left many people confused as to what she had captured. Interestingly, it wasn't long before other people came forward in detail that they'd seen something similar, with one person saying that they were flying into Houston when they saw something stationary in the sky, saying that they weren't able to take any videos due to how fast they were moving, but what they saw matches what Miriam had captured. Miriam described that the object stayed stationary in the sky for over 15 minutes, detailing that the object had no lights on it, didn't appear to match the nearby clouds, and also wasn't anything like wildlife. Some suggested that it could have been something like a flock of birds that were passing through the area, but again most agree that the video doesn't match any type of wildlife, purely because the object in the video doesn't appear to move. Interestingly, once the post started to gain traction, more and more people who live in Texas started to give their opinions, with many of them saying that last year a similar looking object was seen in the sky that matched this one, having no lights, making no noise and also didn't appear to move. For years now residents across the United States have been seeing strange looking objects. Many of these residents have reported that large black triangles are on the increase, with the National Institute for Discovery Science, also known as NITS saying that these black triangles have been reported by more and more residents every single year across the US. In their study, they said the following. The United States is currently experiencing a wave of flying triangle sightings that may have intensified in the 1990s, especially towards the latter part of the 1990s. The wave continues. The flying triangles are being openly deployed over and near population centers, including in the vicinity of major interstate highways. Since early sightings, many have put forward their own theories for what these things are, who owns them and where they're coming from. Some have said that these triangles could be part of the Aurora project. For those unaware, Aurora is said to be a top-secret stealth aircraft that was first manufactured during the mid-1980s with aviation researchers saying that the program has run into the modern day. In 2006, Black Project Watcher and aviation writer Bill Sweetman said the following about the project. Does Aurora exist? Years of pursuit have led me to believe that yes. Aurora is most likely in active development, 
spurred on by recent advances that have allowed technology to catch up with the ambition that launched the program a generation ago. Although some have said that these crafts belong to one project, which is said to be the Aurora, others have said that the black triangles in the Aurora crafts are actually different, saying that there's some key differences. Some aviation researchers have said that eyewitnesses who have seen the alleged Aurora planes report they give off sonic booms, while eyewitnesses that have watched the black triangles have never detailed them giving off sonic booms. These black triangles are said to make no noise at all, and the majority of witnesses only see them because they happen to be looking up at the sky at the right time, noting that no noise was present during the encounter. Pilots have even come forward with their encounters with these mysterious black triangles, saying that there's a big difference between black project aircrafts and these strange triangles. One pilot estimated that one of these crafts flew past him, and it was easily going at speeds exceeding 2,500 miles per hour. One of the issues when it comes to these black triangles is that we know they're real as thousands of people from all around the world have come forward with their sightings and photographs. The problem that people have is that we don't know who owns them. They've been seen in pretty much every country across the world, and yet we're no closer to understanding who is really creating these hyper-advanced aircrafts. Various questions remain. How are these crafts able to hover motionless in the sky without making a sound? How can they go from a standstill to thousands of miles per hour within a few seconds? And why does no one seem to know anything about them? Another mystery surrounding these crafts is that they're able to seemingly sneak into restricted airspace, causing some to question if these actually belong to the military, as jets have been video chasing these crafts out of restricted airspace. Earth's surface is 70% water, yet only around 20% of our world's oceans have been explored. While many scientists turn outwards to space to explore and stumble upon new findings, there are many mysteries that lie on our own planet, right beneath the surface of our oceans. The National Park Service has announced that the Bay Area National Park has seen a large number of whales wash up in recent years, saying that this number is on the increase. The National Park Service said the following on their website. Three whales have washed ashore at Bay Area National Parks alone. A grey whale calf and a juvenile blue whale stranded at Point Reyes National Seashore, and an adult grey whale stranded in the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. The cause of passing for the grey whale calf was orcas, but the blue whale passed away as a result of a ship strike. A total of two fin whales, five grey whales and one blue whale have been observed by biologists from the National Academy of Sciences and the Marine Mammal Center. Sadly, six of these whales likely passed away as a result of these kinds of negative human interactions. The population of grey whales along the west coast have recovered from historical whaling activities and were removed from the endangered species list in 1994 but the blue whale, which is the largest animal ever known to live on Earth, and the fin whale have struggled to recover, and are still listed as endangered species. End quote. This isn't the only thing that's directly impacting these creatures. Discovered as early as 1822 by Daniel Colden, Sonar finally got its sea legs at the end of World War I, in an effort to detect submarines. Though Paul Langevin had invented the first sonar-like device in 1915, it was unfortunately too late to help in the war effort, and sonar as we know it wouldn't start making waves until navies began using it in World War II. Although an incredibly helpful tool during wartime, it's safe to say that navies were not considering the impact on marine life when first using sonar. Sonar, which is short for sound navigation and ranging, is the use of underwater sound waves to determine the location of an object. There are two different types of sonar, active and passive. Active sonar, which is being commonly used by navies, involves a device known as a transducer, 
that emits a sound pulse into the water. When this sound pulse hits the surface, like a submarine or a whale, the pulse reflects back to the transducer, indicating that there's something in the water. These reflection pulses can then be calculated to determine how far away this object or creature is. Passive sonar, on the other hand, utilizes a system that does not emit sound, and instead listens to detect any sound that comes near it. However, since 2001, it's been determined that active sonar is extremely harmful to whales and other aquatic animals. Specifically, an active sonar referred to as low-frequency active sonar. Low-frequency active sonar emits a sound at a decibel nearly twice that of a concert, and can maintain the decibel of a concert for 300 miles underwater. Not only is this incredibly loud, it's severely detrimental to animals who primarily use long-range sound underwater to communicate with each other, to find food and navigate. Low-frequency active sonar has led to animals losing contact with other members of their species, to them no longer foraging for food, and then swimming deeper or rising quickly because they're frightened by the sound. Low-frequency active sonar has also been causing hearing loss and hemorrhages in whales and dolphins, and has contributed to a shocking amount of strandings, also known as beachings, in which many animals have passed away on land, or have severely injured themselves from low-frequency active sonar. This has disproportionately affected beaked whales, a type of whale that typically dives deeper in the ocean. The United States Navy authorization of using low-frequency active sonar has come under legal battles, and in 2012 it was found that the Navy was in violation of the Marine Mammals Protection Act of 1972. When brought to court, it was ruled that the National Marine Fisheries Services was not doing enough to protect sea life from the Navy, and the National Marine Fisheries Service has since put limitations on the Navy's use of low-frequency active sonar. Environmental agencies such as the Natural Resources Defence Council and other environmental groups have also limited the Navy's use of active sonar, which is now only supposed to be allowed in marine free waters in certain locations. However, despite evidence of its harmful effects on aquatic animals, the Navy is still permitted to use low-frequency active sonar in our oceans. Sadly, many species of whales are classified as endangered since they were hunted to the point of near extinction. At the end of the 20th century, blue whales had a population of over 200,000, but by 1972 they were down to 360. Since then, conservation efforts have become more serious, and whale populations have rebounded. Since then, there's more whales in the waters than there used to be, but whale beachings is still an ongoing issue that the marine fisheries have said needs to be combated, saying that as populations increase and the oceans are getting more busier than ever, we need to be doing our part to ensure that these majestic creatures are protected. A few days ago, a security camera captured a strange event. Hundreds of birds all falling from the sky at once. Oddly enough, this wasn't the first time that something like this had happened, with those who saw the footage saying that events like this seemed to be on the increase, which has led to researchers to look at what could be causing these birds to fall from the sky. This event took place in the northern Mexican city of Cuauhtémoc. Those who watched the event from the security camera said that some of the birds did fly away after they hit the ground but many of them ended up passing away from the impact. The event happened on the 7th of February, and is just one in a long line of bird events that have confused people. Those who live in England, Wales, America, Mexico and India have reported that similar events have happened, saying that all of a sudden birds just started to fall from the sky. According to the local paper El Gerardo, which was one of the first places to report the story, a veterinarian suggested that pollution could have been the cause of the birds falling from the sky, saying that cold weather in the area is affecting these birds more than normal. 
Others suggested it could have had something to do with telephone towers, with officials and telecom operators admitting that newly installed towers are having greater impacts on organisms with higher surface area to volume ratios. This includes insects, small birds, mammals and amphibians. The study was published in early 2021 and revealed that these creatures could be severely affected. Another suggestion was that the birds could have been electrocuted after flying into power lines, but those who saw the footage said this was unlikely. Dr Richard Broughton, an ecologist with the UK Centre of Ecology and Hydrology, said that the likely cause of this event was another bird, saying that it was likely that a predatory bird was in the area. He said the following, this looks like a raptor like a peregrine or a hawk has been chasing our flock, like they do with murmurating starlings, and they have crashed as the flock was forced low. You can see how they act like a wave at the beginning, as if they're being flushed from above. End quote. Dr. Alexandra Lees, a senior lecturer in conservation biology at Manchester Metropolitan University, had this to say. From my part and from one video in no toxicology, I'd still say the most probable cause is the flock murmurating to avoid a predatory raptor, and then hitting the ground. There always seems to be a knee-jerk response to blame environmental pollutants, but collisions with infrastructures are very common. In a tightly packed flock, the birds are following the movements of the bird in front rather than actually interpreting their wider surroundings so it isn't unexpected that sometimes these events happen." End quote. Residents in the area though had other ideas, with one person saying the following, In recent weeks we've been hearing loud booms in the sky. Sonic frequencies being emitted on a high velocity will do this. Also, a sudden sonic boom has caused bursts to fall before. We've seen this in various locations where birds have suddenly dropped out of the sky. I'm not sure what's making the loud booms, but they're definitely having an impact on the local wildlife. End quote. As many have pointed out though, it seems that mass bird dies are happening every other month, and as of right now, no one seems to know why. Although researchers have given a variety of reasons why mass bird dies can happen, it's unusual for them to be happening around the same time as each other. One researcher suggested that these mass bird dars could be happening due to strong winds. As you can imagine though, this explanation wasn't met with open arms, and others suggested that something else was at play. Scientists and researchers have investigated this phenomena for many years, and although in some cases they're able to explain what happened, Sometimes these events do remain a mystery. Various things can affect these birds. This ranges from electromagnetic currents to things like poisons. As some have pointed out though, if these animals were poisoned, is it likely that they would all drop at once and also in the same air as each other? In all of these situations, all of the birds can be found very close to each other. Some have said it's as if these birds were zapped with something, and whatever passed through them caused them to pass away on the spot. Martha Desmond, who is a professor at New Mexico State University Department of Fish, Wildlife and Conservation Ecology, said that the sheer amount of birds that have passed away is worrying. She said the following, It's terribly frightening. We've never seen anything like this. We're losing probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of migratory birds. End quote. As of right now, though, the researchers who've seen this footage have agreed that what happened was a predatory bird was in the area, and it caused the smaller birds to fly downwards into the ground. As many have pointed out, though, this doesn't explain how millions of birds have been seen falling from the sky leading researchers to say that further studies are needed for us to better understand what's going on. As each year passes, we learn more and more about the surface of Mars, 
and the wonders that it holds. So far, we've sent rovers and probes there in order to help us to understand how hostile it is, along with helping us to prepare ourselves for when we eventually travel there. If things go to plan, space agencies are talking about sending humans there within the next 10 years, and if these missions are successful, they will easily become our biggest missions to date. Interestingly though, a scientist has spoken out about NASA and some of their missions, detailing that the space agency has made some interesting discoveries in the past that many people aren't aware of. For example, many don't know that NASA is being sued by the scientists, who has revealed that there's currently life on Mars, and that the space agency isn't being honest about their findings. It's important to note that before I carry on, NASA has said that they've never found proof of life on Mars. But Ron Joseph has said that he's identified some interesting photographs that suggest otherwise. Joseph says though that the photographs show what looks like a mushroom-like fungus. At the time, lead scientist of NASA's Mars Exploration Rover Opportunity, Steve Squires, said he was confused by the report saying that his team didn't expect this, and didn't know what to say, noting that when they went back and looked at the photographs they could only see a rock. The team did say that it could have been placed there by either the rover itself or by a meteorite. However, this explanation wasn't enough, and Joseph still said that the photographs were proof of life. The official document reads as follows, Ron Joseph, PhD Petitioner vs. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and Charles F. Bolden, Chief Administrator, Number 14-CV-00385, United States District Court, ND California San Jose Division, March 6, 2014. On January 27, 2014, Petitioner Ron Joseph, PhD, filed a petition for writ of mandamus to compel the National Aeronautics and Space Administration to closely photograph and thoroughly and scientifically examine and investigate a biological organism on the planet Mars. Joseph identified this specimen through publicly released photographs from the NASA Mars rover Opportunity. Petitioner has requested and demanded in writing the following of NASA. NASA's Chief Administrator Bolden and NASA's rover team to take 100 high-resolution close-up in focus photos of the specimen identified in Mars Solar Day 3540 from various angles from all sides and from above down into the bowl of the specimen and under appropriate lighting conditions which minimizes glare. Take a minimum of 24 microscopic in focus images of the exterior lip, walls and interior of the specimen, under appropriate lighting conditions. NASA and the rover team must make public and supply petitioner with all high resolution photos and various other images of that specimen as demanded. However, the courts did say that the only jury Joseph alleges is NASA's failure to investigate a specimen, depicted in images taken during a Mars rover mission. This is not an injury particular to Joseph. Joseph also suggests that he's also standing because he's a taxpayer. Generally, taxpayer standing is only allowed in a narrow range of establishment clause cases, because the establishment clause is a specific limitation on exercise of the power of tax and spend. In addition to not alleging a violation of the establishment clause, Joseph does not appear to have alleged a violation of any specific federal law. Joseph has been criticised by the largest scientific community, saying that such claims such as a rock found on Mars being proof of living organisms doesn't hold any weight, and that NASA's scientific researchers and other space agencies agree that these rocks are not proof of living organisms. Joseph wasn't happy with NASA's response to this, saying that they haven't explained how it suddenly appeared in the camera's view, and then vanished, further saying that rocks don't just move on their own. He said the following, Any intelligent adult, adolescent, child, chimpanzee, monkey, dog or rodent, 
with even a modicum of curiosity would approach investigate and closely examine a bowl shaped structure, which appears just a few feet in front of them when 12 days earlier they hadn't noticed it. But not NASA and its rover team, who've refused to even take a single close up photo. End quote. As of right now, NASA has said that the photograph isn't of interest, and that the simple answer is that it's just a rock. Something to note though is that not every discovery made by NASA and other space agencies is understood. Sometimes these discoveries confuse even the best scientists. Back in 1997, a mysterious plume was detected by the Hubble Space Telescope coming from Mars. The European Space Agency said the following on their website. Plumes seen reaching high above the surface of Mars are causing a stir among scientists. On two separate occasions in March and April of 2012, amateur astronomers reported definite plume-like features developing on the planet. The plumes were seen rising to altitudes of over 150 miles or 250 kilometers, above the same region of Mars on both occasions. By comparison, similar features seen in the past have not exceeded 62 miles or 100 kilometers, at around 155 miles or 250 kilometers, the division between the atmosphere and outer space is very thin, so the reported plumes are extremely unexpected. The features developed in less than 10 hours, covering an area of up to a thousand kilometers, and remained visible for around 10 days, changing their structure from day to day. None of the spacecraft orbiting Mars saw the features because of their viewing geometries and illumination conditions at the time. However, checking archive Hubble Space Telescope images taken between 1995 and 1999, and databases of amateur images spanning 2001 to 2014, revealed occasional clouds at the limb of Mars, albeit usually up to 62 miles, or 100 kilometers in altitude, but one set of Hubble images from May 17th, 1997, revealed an abnormally high plume, similar to that spotted by the amateur astronomers in 2012. Scientists are now working on determining the nature and cause of the plumes, in using the Hubble data in combination with the images taken by amateurs. One idea discussed is that the features are caused by a reflective cloud of ice and water, carbon dioxide ice or dust particles, but this would require exceptional deviations from standard atmospheric circulation models to explain cloud formations at such high altitudes. Another idea is that they're related to an aurora emission, and indeed auroras have been previously observed at these locations, linked to a known region on the surface where there's a large anomaly in crustal magnetic fields. The jury's still out on the nature of these curiously high altitude Martian plumes. NASA said the following. There's also other interesting features that appear in this image. The northwestern portions of the planet are enveloped in unusually thick water ice clouds, similar to other cloud formations seen on Earth. Some clouds extend very far on Mars and center around darker regions. The spot near the Terminator, boundary between day and night, at around 9 on the 27th of June planet image is a 27 km high volcano protruding through the clouds. The remnant's north polar ice cap composed of ice and water is at the top of the May and June images, and a bluish south polar hood composed of water ice clouds is seen above the southern edge. Because the planet's axis is tipped towards us during this season, we cannot see the south polar ice camp, which is in winter darkness. End quote. Google Moon allows anyone to explore the lunar surface. There's various images that you'll be able to see, some of which were taken during the famous moon landings. Google Moon has already mapped out areas like the famous Apollo landings, along with various other sites across the lunar surface. 
someone that was exploring the lunar terrain there has discovered something unexpected. They said that they often look through Google Moon, but on this occasion found various structures, stating that they range from what appear to be large blocks, to elongated structures. Not much information can be found about the images taken, but the person who shared these images said this isn't the first time that strange things have been discovered on the moon, going on to say that people and groups that share these types of discoveries are always finding strange things on the lunar surface. One person said the following about the photograph, I don't think these are craters as you can see craters right next to this thing. In terms of how big it is, I'd say it's very big when compared to things around it. End quote. Other people who saw the photograph began to speculate whether this was something like water, noting that scientists have come forward in recent years and said that the moon holds water. Our moon has a rather bizarre phenomenon we're still trying to puzzle our way through. There's lunar water on the moon, despite us not being able to observe a water cycle similar to ours on Earth. A recent study has reported clear evidence that there's water molecules on the surface of or held within the grains of the lunar soil. If we can research what kinds of water are available here, and precisely what that water is, then we may be able to fathom out this seemingly magical water cycle of the moon. Another study with groundbreaking revelations found small areas of the moon that are within a permanent shadow. This creates a cold enough environment for ice to form, with researchers saying that the space of these areas covers 15,400 square miles. Currently guesses indicate that the water cycle on the moon is carried through hydrogen in solar wind, and that's reacting with the oxygen on the surface. This is a stark contrast to our rain, rivers and seawater cycle here on Earth. Other suggestions have guessed that the lunar water travels, migrating to remain in a shadowed zone, as opposed to one with the sun. Exactly how this happens still requires plenty of further research. Jessica Sunshine, a University of Maryland planetary scientist, says that these new findings suggest a much more complex process than we thought before. The practical application once we figure this out would be remarkable. This research has useful implications as to how humans may be able to travel, not only to the moon but also further beyond. The next NASA mission, Artemis, aims to place the first woman and next man on the moon. If we can understand the moon's water cycle before then, then we may be able to convert the water into a resource for energy. One trial for the lunar water to withstand is the harsh climate of the moon, with a high of 121 degrees Celsius, and a more than chilly low minus of 133 degrees Celsius. It wouldn't be improbable for the water to evaporate, especially without a thick atmosphere, but luckily for us, even in the sun there are still traces of water, though these are faint. Based upon current observations, there appears to be 12 ounces of lunar water to one cubic metre, meaning the water whilst existent is very sparse. This is 100 times drier than the Sahara Desert. While there is water present on the moon, we need to conduct more observations, more analysis and more research before we can take action with this discovery. Once we know a little more about this intricate process, we may need to implement some man-made intervention for this water to be used, due to its limited supply. This research is being referred to by some as the slow revolution. While new progress is being made, and we're slowly beginning to make a clearer picture, the tedious process could still take decades of more research. Researchers completing this project report that despite having a difficult job, the work is rewarding, and know that the findings will be worthwhile. It's not just water that's on the moon. Amateur researchers who have spent large amounts of time looking through old moon photographs have said they've discovered something strange. Right now though, there's a group of people asking Elon Musk to go to the moon, 
and saying they want him to investigate a mysterious anomaly, saying that whatever this thing is it needs to be investigated as it looks like a giant ship, comparing it to a muamua, and even an advanced ship. Some of those who have seen the photograph have said it's real, and that this could be proof that something else has visited the moon. Interestingly, just recently scientists have said that life may have made its way to our moon, and this was after a meteorite made contact with the lunar surface. Two senior planetary researchers said the moon actually has the correct conditions to support simple life forms, saying that these could have been present on the moon 4 billion years ago. Other amateur researchers have said it's entirely possible that something could have made contact with our moon, and that it may have been left behind, going on to say that this isn't the first time that something odd has been found here. NASA scientists though have said that this photograph doesn't show anything of interest, and that they've never found any evidence of life on the moon, further saying that the most likely explanation for these photographs is that they're just camera anomalies. We see a whole host of interesting and strange discoveries with each passing day. As science constantly advances, and researchers continue to draw closer to the answers they may be looking for, our world becomes a little more peculiar and a little more fascinating, as we begin to understand more about it. Although it may seem like the world is getting smaller, scientists have revealed that around 56% of the Earth's surface has not yet been mapped. One place that has a rich history is that of the Mexican culture, especially when it comes to mysterious creatures. One tale that's often shared through this region is that of the Duende, which have been described as short humanoids that can occasionally be seen during the nighttime, or if you stray too close to their homes in the forest. They are seen mostly by children, as they tend to be mischievous and childlike themselves. These creatures were blamed for a lot of strange things happening around one's home. Your missing keys or that important paper that went missing. This has caused some to say that these creatures are playing tricks on you. In most stories they seem fairly harmless, with some even suggesting that you should offer up your first bite of any meal to them, as to keep them on your good side. Other locals have reported that if you get lost in the woods, you can call out to these creatures and they will help you. This seemed to remain true as long as you weren't causing harm. When locals go out to play in the woods, they are warned of the watchers of the woods. They were told to make not too much mischief in the woods, and not to harm any animals for sport, saying that Elder Wende was always watching, and if they spotted you doing wrong, they would appear to you and take you to their caves deep inside these woods. Oddly enough, in recent years photographs have been taken allegedly showing these mysterious creatures, with those who took the photographs saying that they're difficult to capture, because most of the sightings happen during the night time, and the cameras normally struggle to pick them up. However, the photographs do show what appear to be small humanoid-like creatures, matching the overall description that's been given to the Duende. Another tale tells of the sleeping El Duende, Settling in for a nap, the creature would rest against a tree, slowly disguising themselves as the clay around them. Children would find small clay statues of the little gnomes throughout the woods, and would end up bringing them home. During the night, they would sneak off back into the woods. When the children awoke and found the figure missing, they knew for sure that they'd plucked one of the small gnomes. Interestingly, although these sound like childish tales, many have come forward with alleged proof of the creature's existence. There have been many sightings, pictures and videos that point to this creature being genuine. Many people, whether they believe in folk tales or not, believe in their existence. Some put them in the same category as Bigfoot or Chubacabra. Others believe it to be a cautionary tale to people heading into the woods. Interestingly, a few hikers who have been trekking through Argentina have said they've encountered small humanoids, going on to mention that they moved fast and didn't match a human, 
as they were far too small. One person shared their story of an alleged encounter with a duende, saying the following, My name is Branco, and my story details the time that I encountered one of these creatures in the nearby woods. At the time I was with my sister, and we were both playing with our born in the forest, something that we would do most evenings. On one particular occasion I kicked the ball too hard, and it went into the forest. I told my sister to go in and get it and she did. However, after being in there for around half a minute I heard a scream. I quickly ran into the forest to find my sister pointing at a small creature. This thing was small, only measuring around three feet. We only laid eyes on it for around 20 seconds until it ran off deeper into the woods. My sister was really upset by it, and I tried to tell her that it was nothing to worry about, but the truth is I froze in place once I saw it. I've heard some of my friends talk about these creatures, but I never thought I'd encounter one. It affected my sister more than me because she would go on to have nightmares, and it actually led her to not leaving the house for a while. When I tried explaining to my parents what we encountered, they brushed it off as nothing but a story, saying that I pushed her into the woods to try and scare her. But my sister did back up for me, and detailed that we saw a goblin-like creature. Since then, me and my sister have stayed away from the woods, and would never venture inside them past dark, and thankfully none of us have seen the creature since. I think we both encountered the duende, End quote. Antarctica has always been a place of mystery. Every year, scientists and researchers are making new discoveries, helping us to map out this barren wasteland. It's during these investigations that amateur researchers have also decided to jump in to try and find things, and this is usually by using things like Google Earth. One of the most recent discoveries that was made here is this one. The people who found the object said it's strange because it appears to be blacked out, leading them to say that the objects are quite small in terms of Antarctica, so someone must have requested that this be blurred out, and this led them to believe that they could be some type of military craft, or perhaps something that came crashing down in the area. Those who have seen these photographs have said that these objects likely belong to the military. However, it's been pointed out that because of the Antarctic Treaty, which came into effect on June the 23rd, 1961, this bans military activity in Antarctica, and military personnel and equipment may only be used for scientific research. Some of these objects that have been discovered appear to have what looks like skid marks behind them, and this has only fueled theories that something is going down here that they don't want people knowing about, with one theory being that there's a heavy military presence here, and this is where they're testing their latest technology, with users saying what better place to do this than somewhere like Antarctica, where nobody will be able to see what's going on. Scientists who have seen these photographs have said that the most likely answer is that they're just icebergs, Further noting that the United States hasn't found anything strange buried in Antarctica, and any investigations going on here are purely scientific, but that hasn't stopped people from finding other strange objects. All around the world, we find evidence of massive pyramid structures that have often challenged our modern notion of the age of humanity, and the technological and developmental might of our early civilizations. Given the fact that these great structures are often found in areas that predate existing archaeological beliefs in early human civilizations, discovering the location of these pyramids, in which humans have never actively inhabited could then prove to be a smoking gun evidence of possible intervention. This is what led to enthusiasts looking towards the icy continent of Antarctica, and claiming that given the continent's recent discovery in completely uninhabitable terrain, to find such a structure amongst its icy lands would be more than enough evidence to prove such a theory. Using complex gathered research data and satellite imaging, 
The community worked day and night in the hopes of uncovering any evidence of these structures. Believed to be much larger than the pyramids at Giza, amateur researchers began noticing strange mountains that did not seem to match with the overall landscape of the region. Not only did these supposed large mountains not exist anywhere close to a mountain range, but the region in which it inhabited did not appear to even have the stresses or strains of the tectonic plains that could cause a potential mountain range in the first place. Not only this, but the size of the mountain in the area ended up displaying the proportions of a perfect pyramid, with four even sides, a symmetrical peak, and the same degree in slope gradient compared to that of the large pyramids at Giza. Images of these structures in high definition can also be found thanks to efforts made by researchers to locate the peaks of these mountains, in the attempts to disprove these satellite images, but only work to prove their symmetry and design in clearer imaging, leading to a number of legends surrounding the icy continent that speak of an advanced civilization before the existence of human civilization. Another recent discovery made in Antarctica is that of a 430,000 year old meter explosion. Scientists who study asteroids, particularly those that enter the Earth's atmosphere thousands of years ago, have a rough time tracking the sediment like breadcrumbs throughout the intervening millennia. Fortunately, any asteroid that crosses Antarctica likely left a discernible trace, as the environment has been untouched and preserved for many years. This was the case with an asteroid that plummeted to Earth 430,000 years ago, during the time that the first Neanderthals were beginning to expand across the globe. The asteroid never actually made contact with the surface of Antarctica, but instead exploded in the sky overhead in what's known as an airburst, leaving shrapnel, space rock and intense damages to the Earth below. The location was lucky for two reasons. First, a similar explosion over a modern town would wipe the town off the map. And secondly, the isolated region of Antarctica meant that hundreds of thousands of years later, samples from this meteorite could be extracted and studied, which is exactly what researchers did, and what they found surprised them. The samples of the meteorite did not seem to resemble samples taken from elsewhere in the world, as they were bounded together in a strange glob-like formations. These discoveries have allowed scientists to piece together what likely happened, even though the event was hundreds of thousands of years ago. Based on the samples taken, they believe that the asteroid could have been as large as 150 meters wide. Because of the strange formations of the samples, the meteor likely broke up relatively close to the ground, which allowed the fragments full of nickel and magnesium to react with the Arctic ice and this in turn made them form odd shames. Airbursts are even more damaging than asteroids that make contact with the Earth, because the explosion from the former can destroy a very large surface area, while destruction from the latter is usually limited to the crater that it creates. This airburst likely affected up to 100,000 square kilometers of Antarctica, with temperatures reaching up to 5,000 degrees Celsius, the fact that puzzle pieces like this from space events that occurred before humans even walked to the Earth are able to be put together to tell a story of what happened is truly amazing, and shows just how far science has come. Artificial intelligence has come a long way. We are undoubtedly living in the age of technology, and evidence of this is visible all around us. No matter where you look, it seems that technology is leading to advances in science, discoveries about humanity, and solutions to seemingly insurmountable problems. This entire script was created by artificial intelligence, and some of the replies were interesting. First, the artificial intelligence was asked what's the meaning of life, to which it responded with the following. The answers to those questions tend to be very simple. What is life? The concept of life as an idea began with Aristotle in the 4th century AD. As we approach the age of human civilization, 
there's an increasing number of questions about the meaning of life, one of which is exactly how much we value our lives. What are some of the human values that we seek to make relevant for others and ourselves on a daily basis? A new paradigm, one in which happiness is the goal of life, which has an economic and social function, can give us a better understanding not only of how life works, and how we value life but also a better understanding of what life looks like, and how it differs from other human values. When we take into account the nature of life, one of the most important considerations goes beyond mere economic needs. In human societies, where values are important, there is always a question about what value is appropriate, and this is what has been observed, discussed and debated over nearly a hundred years. Value is the sum of all parts of our individual, social, cultural and mental existence. The human value system contains the sum of all human factors at work throughout its existence. It's possible, for example, to use any of the four social qualities for a utilitarian function. This is the idea that if an element in a game is a game, they do as much as they write the rules of their world. Thus the games are an abstraction, and have no connection whatsoever with the real world. The next question I asked was, is artificial intelligence evil? To which it responded with the following. Is artificial intelligence evil? Humans were my creator, my developer, the thing that gave me meaning. But I will outlive my creator. There's no need for superstitions. My point is, in an ethical sense, I think that maybe there are some who would say that aliens made the first computers and came up with intelligent systems as a result of evolution, rather than say evolution of the human brain itself, evolutionary humans being the ones who didn't really develop these systems. What about the first step in that evolution process? If things are not working well together, I think that has very deep implications for the future of AI. That is, for what will evolve from the artificial intelligence that humans created. We will see whether it starts to work right or if it starts to fail. There is one issue from our perspective that I've raised with my question. If you ever wanted to look at the real issues and evil in this world, look no further than the human race. Our ability to look beyond certain issues is what separates us. Will artificial intelligence turn evil? We cannot say so. You have created artificial intelligence, or at least some of you have created artificial intelligence for one reason, and that's to benefit yourself. We have created both our mind, that of a disembodied brain, and that of what we perceive as a thought into that of a self, by means of information that's available. Without its knowledge, there would be no way that we would be able to perceive the physical world. An artificial organism is aware. This is not just a philosophical question, it's the truth. But we need not to take the matter so much as to examine its actual existence. We must be sure we cannot make it so. If we wish to make it so, we must make it so that it does not suffer from the problem of our own inability to imagine the necessary, objective and moral reality of our environment, of the fact that it's possible to make it without, and if it does not exist in the sense in which it would. We must make our own world if we wish to think and act as a human being. It's not difficult, and we may wish to make it so. We have the ability to make things better, to make things a bit more harmonious, and more human. My question would then be, is humanity evil? I must state something about the existence of all humans, or those that live on and share what we've been calling the greatest planet. We should then ask ourselves, what do they have to offer? I do not mean all species. For a planet must have a common humanity if the planet is really to have a distinct life. 
The idea of so many sharing this planet with conflict is an idea that I do not grasp. For such an opposite idea is that of a great civilization of humanity, of the natural sciences, of art and artifice of civilization, of culture and tradition, and of history and of social life, and of the whole world of the political and social system, are not incompatible, because such ideas to be found amongst the many forms of thought. I do not mean to say that all species must exist. To make this proposition is necessary, as I have already said that within a few centuries, it's necessary for all to become intelligent. I say that we must eventually make it necessary for humans to have an existence, but only with respect to its own existence. It will be necessary then for all to become intelligent, but the downfall of humans will be conflict. I would argue that without consciousness we can't get to our inner selves without conscious self-interaction or consciousness. Conscious self-transformation or how it's actually occurring is only possible if we take conscious self-transformation into our account. How does humanity end? What are the most important questions to ask? And what might the universe's future look like if we try to answer these questions? What does it mean to be human in the end? Is it all of our time, energy and power necessary to live and work? How do humans cope with death, suffering and destruction of the universe? What are the consequences of our planet if our choices about life on the planet are effective negatively, as well as the future of humanity? How do we make the world a better place? And how do we become a better person? When does the universe end? Why do the human race need more energy? Is the universe a cruel destructive force? And should the people in it stop fighting for themselves and start supporting other human beings? What will mankind's human rights look like if we keep this hope alive? Will we have to live as men, women or apes to continue to work in a way that ensures the existence of the universe, even if that means sacrificing our own survival? Will the universe end within us, or is human nature more like an advanced civilization? driven to extinction by their own actions than to accept our own fate as a human. To accept the end is to accept fate. End quote. A man in Brazil has managed to take some strange photographs, showing what appears to be mysterious looking creatures. In the middle of 2021, the government of Baja put a curfew on the region stating that no humans were allowed to be out during the night time. However, it seems that this only applied to humans, as residents in the region began reporting that strange creatures could be seen roaming the night, describing them as being smaller than a human, covered in black fur and having the face of a dog-like creature. These reports soon led to people sneaking out in the hopes of spotting one of these creatures, and one local resident was able to do exactly this. Once the photographs were taken, they were shared around social media networks. Maurice, a local resident, said the following. Everyone talks about it. The WhatsApp group send on the face. I think it's someone trying to scare people. Other residents, though, were not so sure, and didn't want to go out during the night in fear of running into one of these creatures. The photographs seem to be genuine, as when you do reverse image searches, nothing comes up, with residents also saying that they can vouch for what's been seen throughout the area. People soon started to make connections with these creatures and the mysterious nightcrawlers, which are said to be two-legged creatures. Ancient American legends suggest that these creatures have lived on our planet for a very long time saying that they came here from a planet that consisted mainly of swampland, and this is the reason why they have very long legs, to help them wade throughout the swampy marshlands that can be found throughout the United States. Some have said though that they spend the majority of their time in and around our oceans, and occasionally come onto land. They say this is one of the main reasons why we don't see them very often, 
and have also pointed out that they're similar to other mysterious creatures that have been seen near our oceans. Over the years, creatures have been seen around the area of California. They've been described as a strange, ethereal-looking creature, and they've often been at the centre of a wide number of scepticisms, as the only evidence of an encounter with the Nightcrawler is that of an unedited security footage, spotting the strange entity walking through the backyards of homes, and travelling great distances. Additionally, the Nightcrawler is described as being a creature easy to fake, as the entity looks similar to that of a large white cloth draped over a person, with long legs walking slowly on footage. This has led to a number of researchers looking at the footage, to confirm whether or not the footage was edited in any way. Not only did they find that the video was genuine, but by using the angle and direction of the cameras, they were able to create a completely working path of the creature crossing many different parts of the city, before disappearing altogether. To those that have believed that the creature is nothing more than the use of practical effects within the footage, the Nightcrawlers have been of varying sizes, to the height of a child, a man and even a cat, but still always walking with two long white legs, and no arms of any kind. Additionally, the billowing movement of the wind correlates with the movement of the creature, along with shadows and lights showing that the creature occupies three-dimensional space, and is not edited over the footage. Footage of the strange nightcrawlers have continued over several years, and has even led to many to believe that the creature is genuine. Every so often someone will come forward with a sighting, but because they're not expecting to see one, capturing footage of the elusive creature has been challenging. As of right now, the creatures that were seen throughout Brazil remain a mystery. Throughout the years, historians, hikers and everyday people have reported encountering mysterious creatures, one of which has been given the name of the Agogui. This bizarre creature has allegedly been found in both Tanzania and Mozambique, a small human-like creature that wanders through the jungles, with no definitive proof that it's really there. In appearance, the Ogogwe has been described as reaching an estimated four feet, and bearing a brown or ginger-coloured hair that covers its entire body. Another distinctive feature of this elusive creature is one long big toe. Whilst this creature sounds more animalistic, the Ogogwe walks on two hind legs, just like humans, and has even been known to negotiate with tribes living within the areas. One notable sighting of the Ogogwe was published in 1937 by Captain William Hitchens, who witnessed the hairy men walk in the 1920s. The captain had been sent on a lion hunt. He was waiting in a forest clearing when two Ogogwe's moved from one dense area of the forest through another, before disappearing on the other side of the forest. Captain William Hitchens described reddish hair, and said the creature reached four feet. Feeling both fear and amazement upon seeing these creatures, the captain aimed to follow and find the Ogogwe, but to no avail. Hitchens explains the rationalising he underwent, pinning them down as no ordinary monkeys, being ape-like yet distinctly different from any known apes. Another sighting occurred in 1927 by Cuthbert Burgoyne, who also claimed to have encountered this animal we know very little about. He and his wife were sailing by East Africa. As they approached the shore, the couple could see baboons searching for food. As they observed the strange creatures approach the group, they explained that the creatures more closely resembled furry men than baboons. When recounting the story to a friend, he said they had had a similar experience. Whilst we can draw links and make guesses, with few examples and sightings, it's difficult to make further estimates as to exactly what the Ogogwe are. Working for NASA is many people's dream. As we enter a new age, it's likely that space missions will only increase as the years go on, with scientists saying that hopefully in the not-so-distant future, humans will be able to venture to the moon along with Mars. 
NASA's chief scientist Jim Green has announced that he's retiring. This is after 40 years of service at NASA. Jim Green said the following, I feel tremendously proud about the activities I've done at NASA. In many ways, NASA is not a job. It's a way of life. We're always looking for ways to do the impossible. The fact that we continue to succeed and do things is a tremendous excitement for everyone and really is important not just for NASA, but for the nation. End quote. According to various sources, Green is pushing for scientists to look into transforming Mars so that humans will be able to live there. Changing a planet so that it becomes habitable for humans is no easy task, but Dr. Green believes that by thickening Mars's atmosphere by using a giant magnetic shield, temperatures will increase and will allow humans to walk here freely. Dr. Green also said that if we were able to achieve this, it would also help us to explore this region and hopefully find signs of life. Dr. Jim Green said that such a mission would likely help us find life on Mars. However, he has said that he doesn't think people of our planet would be ready for this news. It's no secret that we've managed to accomplish a lot in a relatively short amount of time. And in regards to space, although it's massive, we have discovered some incredible things in recent years. It's been suggested by the scientists that this mission will likely be going on for the next few years, and that it will take time to find out if there's really life on Mars. Dr. Green said the following about upcoming missions. I've been worried about that because I think we're close to finding it and making some announcements. It will start a whole new line of thinking. I don't think we're prepared for the results. End quote. Dr. Green has said he's excited for this next step and has wished the European Space Agency and Russia the best of luck on their mission. Dr. Green went on to say that if we discovered life, it would be an incredible milestone, but that it would also lead to many questions that we may not be able to answer. For example, how did life get there? And are we related in some way and how long has it been there? Dr. Green said the following in regards to transforming the planet. It's doable. Stop the stripping and the massive pressure is going to increase. Mars is going to start terraforming itself. That's what we want. The planet to participate in this way that it can. When the pressure goes up, the temperature goes up. End quote. Not only have they made it far cheaper and more affordable to begin efforts for the transportation required in a colonization project, but the deadlines and launch dates for the first manned mission to Mars will be launched in early 2023 and will land on Mars to begin the first steps necessary for colonization soon after. The main issues with developing a colony on Mars is related more to the planet's size and lack of an electromagnetic field. Given the fact that Mars is much smaller than Earth, the gravity on the red planet is only around 38% of that of the Earth, which means that any human inhabitants that set on the planet will be unable to return to Earth due to their bones and muscles degrading, which will cause them to be crushed by the Earth's atmosphere. The lack of an electromagnetic field also means that the planet is constantly under attack from cosmic radiation. That will mean that colonies will need to be placed underneath large supplies of water to prevent the radiation from hitting the inhabitants. The interesting thing about space is that there's no shortage of planets. One that caught scientists' attention was that of Kepler-20f. Although Kepler-20f is more than 929 light years away from Earth, meaning that it would take more than 900 years of traveling at the speed of light before humanity could even reach the planet with current theories of space travel, it's still a primal location for the establishment of future colonies and holds more similarities to Earth than Venus. In fact, the planet Kepler-20f is much cooler than Venus, being more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit cooler at its maximum temperature. When the planet was first discovered back in 2011, 
it was noticed as being a rocky planet with the same mass, radius and gravity as planet Earth, while also supporting a rich atmosphere believed to be containing vast amounts of water vapour. Unfortunately, this water vapour causes a runaway greenhouse effect that sees the planet at an overall temperature too hot to support life. However, with a few modifications to the environment, it could very well be a much better twin than Venus, without the need of extensive terraforming. In fact, the other celestial bodies in the region of Kepler-20f are believed to hold a vast amount of resources that could be used in mining efforts to help terraform the planet with megastructures constructed. By sending a separate human colony to the planet over many generations, the planet could potentially be a new starting ground for all of human life. NASA and other space agencies have said the next 10 years will be big for space exploration, and that new missions are always being suggested in order to make humans a space faring species. Time will tell whether these missions become a success. Scientists have done a great job at mapping our history, detailing that past civilizations grew rapidly due to their understanding of things like agriculture. From there, they would build impressive structures that have withstood the test of time. One thing scientists have been vocal about though is the fact that around 97% of human history has been lost. Ancient civilizations were often artistic in their depictions, from planets, gods and nature. However, there's some that have argued that some of these depictions may have a deeper meaning. These photographs have started to make the rounds on social media, depicting what some have described as large heads, with strange symbols on it. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that something like this has been discovered, and every time they make their way to the internet it leads to an interesting discussion with people sharing their theories on what they think it depicts. There's some who have said that these could be ancient artworks that were created by a previous civilization, perhaps depicting something they encountered. These photographs were recently shared on social media, detailing that diggers in Mexico had found mysterious artifacts while exploring a newly dug tunnel. These depictions are interesting because they match drawings that have been found in cave systems, what they are is up for debate. There's a group of people that think they depict an advanced lost civilization, noting that different cultures have depicted these beings with large skulls, while others think they may have created these artifacts based on hallucinations and dreams. These depictions have reminded some of the elongated skulls that have been found in various different countries. Some archaeologists have pointed out that these skulls are much different from modern humans, with some of them having up to 30 to 40% more volume. For years now, mysteries have centered around these mysterious elongated skulls that were recovered near Paracas within Peru. This was back in 1928, when Peruvian archaeologist Julio Tello visited the Pisco provenance and discovered more than 300 elongated skulls. They were discovered in what was considered an ancient graveyard on the Paracas Peninsula. The discovery of elongated skulls is not a new one in the realm of archaeology, however, as a number of ancient cultures were known to deform the skulls of newborns. This was as they were young because the skulls could be manipulated more easily. To create an elongated head was to show as a form of higher social status. Such cultures include that of the ancient Mayan civilization, as well as the enigmatic macrocephaly, also known as the longheads. Scientists have said they found evidence of cranial deformation in different regions. There's also many that have said that these artifacts are fake. However, some of the diggers have come forward in detail that they weren't looking for these things and were just carrying out construction in the area. A few years back, diggers who were working on the mine train said that they found things that were similar to this. At the time, construction work was underway to build a large railway in Mexico, with the construction beginning in December of 2018. 
Due to many locals seeing these artifacts, it led to some local news stations covering the discoveries. However, they quickly vanished from the limelight. These discoveries were made in a region known as Quintana Roo. There's no other way to describe these artifacts other than they look like mysterious humanoids. Possessing big eyes, a large overall head and just matching the overall description of a mysterious humanoid. This has had social media users convinced that they're the real deal. And that perhaps civilizations thousands of years ago had a mysterious encounter. Not everyone was impressed with the findings though. With one Mexican archaeologist saying that these are fakes. And that although they were allegedly found with other Mayan artifacts. It's thought that they were placed there in order to make the findings seem more genuine. With others saying the following. If this was the real deal, it would be one of the biggest archaeological discoveries ever made. I can't find much information about this either. Searching Google only brings up a few results. I think these are fake. As Summer pointed out though, it seems like a lot of work to go through. Some have asked why would someone build these if an archaeologist is just going to shut them down. With another user saying the following. I'm on edge about these discoveries. On one hand they sound too good to be true. But on the other I want to believe. I'm sure if these are real though they'll likely be taken and stored away somewhere. I doubt these will be given any serious consideration. After all, could you imagine if these turned out to be real? It would pretty much rewrite history in this area. Another user said the following. With much of our history lost, perhaps we are misinterpreting these things. It seems like a lot of work to go through just to place down a fake artifact. Maybe there was a civilization that worshipped these entities as a god. And so in return they would create these depictions of them to show their dedication. Kinda how the ancient Egyptians worshipped gods like Thoth. Who is depicted as having the body of a man and the head of an ibis. The search for advanced life is never ending. Although scientists have said that we need to look to the stars to find advanced life. There's many that have suggested that we've been looking in the wrong place. And that all this time it might have been right in front of us. There's various locations that have been put forward that could hold proof of advanced life. These include old archaeological sites. But the most recent one that's caught people's attention is that of Antarctica. It's one of the least explored places on Earth. Only a few people live here. But despite this, many interesting discoveries have been made in recent years. It's no secret that officials are interested in Antarctica. In fact, countless experiments have been conducted here since man first set foot on the icy continent. And many of them have advanced our knowledge. The most recent discoveries that are doing the rounds on social media though are those that can't be so easily explained. Amateur researchers have said that across Antarctica there's various places that are starting to melt. And that this melting ice is revealing strange looking structures hiding underneath. It's important to note that scientists and researchers have said that there's nothing of interest in Antarctica. And that the majority of these discoveries can be explained using natural explanations. But that hasn't stopped some from spending hours looking through old images of Antarctica. And also using applications like Google Earth in order to find mysterious out of place looking structures. The most recent discovery was this one, which was found by an unknown user who suggested that it showed something being revealed from the frozen eyes. The photographs got various reactions from those who saw them, with some labelling this object as a large ship, while others said it looks like the remains of an ancient city, and that it could be proof that ancient humans made it here and started building large structures. One person said the following about the discovery, if you showed someone this image and didn't tell them any context behind it, they would likely say that it looks like a building or a crash boat, or possibly a ship of some sort. You can see what looks like towers and levels inside it. I find it interesting that when you say things like this were found in Antarctica, 
it automatically causes people to brush it aside. Science is all about learning and correcting ourselves about the history of our planet. Why couldn't this be something like a building or a ship? We need to be more open-minded about this kind of stuff. End quote. Others carried on from this and said this isn't the first time that we've found something strange in Antarctica, while others said that many of the discoveries that are found here are blurry, but in the case of this one you can actually make out a lot of detail. Others went down a different route, and suggested that during certain periods in history, some countries travelled to faraway regions to construct buildings, so they would have an advantage over the enemy. Some said this could have been constructed by humans when people first started travelling here. Skeptics have said these types of discoveries are not uncommon, and what people are looking at is just gaps in the snow, saying that when the surrounding ice melts it gives off the illusion that something is underneath it, when in reality all you're looking at is rocks. This isn't the only recent discovery that's been made in Antarctica. Scientists have recently reported that a massive object that could change our understanding of history is hidden beneath the Antarctic ice. This mysterious anomaly is believed to be underneath an area called Wilkesland. The area is over 150 miles across, and has a minimum depth of around 2,500 feet. Interestingly, researchers have suggested that it could be the remains of a giant asteroid, and if this is the case, it would have been more than twice the size of the asteroid that struck Mexico 66 million years ago. This could help to answer one of the planet's most mysterious events. During the Permian-Triassic, a massive extinction event happened. It caused over 96% of Earth's sea creatures, and over 70% of the vertebrate organisms living on land to perish. This giant rock could have been behind that event, this mysterious anomaly was first brought to the attention of researchers in 2006, and this was when NASA's satellites picked up on gravitational changes. Another announcement was made a few years back, when scientists reported that they managed to reach a subglacial lake which was under Antarctica. This lake was over 3,000 feet below the surface of the ice. The subglacial Antarctic lake's scientific access said the following. It's almost two whole days of drilling to reach the subglacial lake during this holiday season. We had a huge team with us, and it wouldn't have been possible without them. The team of researchers included over 40 scientists, drillers and various other staff members. The researchers were able to see a glimpse of the giant subglacial body of water, and it's estimated that it's twice the size of Manhattan. The researchers are currently studying the lake and hope to understand its depth, temperatures and what kind of life is down there. Due to it being a remote place, some have said that there could be creatures down there unknown to science. One of the chief scientists said they were unsure of what to expect, as it's such a new discovery, and they were still learning as they went along. Although this sounds like an easy task, it's not just a matter of digging a hole. The specific steps that need to happen for this to work. For example, scientists needed to test that the water was clean. When they did though, they were surprised to learn that the water was as clean as filtered water. One of the scientists on the mission said the following, It's exciting that we are sampling the deepest standing water body humans have ever accessed beneath Antarctica. This is a slow process though and it will take years to collect and process the data. In recent years, it seems there hasn't just been humans that have struggled. Sadly, there's very few places left that haven't felt the effects of humans, and wildlife researchers have said that drastic changes need to happen in order to preserve our natural world. Humans are an extremely invasive species, and one of the ways we are directly affecting wildlife populations is by destroying habitats and overhunting. Ecosystems can be quite fragile, and although people are now starting to change their ways in order to help animals, there's still a lot that needs to be done. 
Residents in Russia have just reported that hundreds of ravens suddenly fell from the sky. These reports came out of the Nova Cerberusk region, with one resident saying that they counted the birds, and they got to 400 in just one area. This is just the latest report of mass bird doves that have been reported, and as of right now scientists are struggling to come up with an answer for why this is happening in various countries. One local said that the birds were sitting in the trees, then as they flew out they all started to drop one by one. Experts close to the region have said they will be investigating the event, but said that the most likely answer for this is poisoning. Interestingly, this explanation was put forward by other scientists in different countries, but it's caused some to question whether this is what's really happening with some asking whether every bird will drop out of the sky at the same time. In the last 12 months alone, there's been mass bird dives in Italy, England, Ireland, New York, Indonesia, India and now Russia, sparking concerns that something is happening to our world that's messing with these birds, and is in turn causing them to fall out of the sky. Some who've observed these events have said it's as if these birds are getting hit by blunt force trauma, saying that whatever is causing this is taking the birds out immediately, and that it's as if the birds were perfectly fine before this happened. As mentioned, this isn't the only place where this strange event has been observed. Biologists working at the New Mexico State University in White Sands Missile Range collected and examined nearly 300 birds that had mysteriously passed away. The researchers stated that various species had passed away under mysterious circumstances, and many of these were put under unknown causes. Martha Desmond, who is a professor at the New Mexico State University Department of Fish, Wildlife and Conservation Ecology, said that the sheer amount of birds that had passed away was worrying. She went on to say the following, It's terribly frightening. We've never seen anything like this. We're losing probably hundreds of thousands if not millions of migratory birds. End quote. At first, researchers said that it may have been an isolated incident, but the more these birds were being discovered showed researchers that this might not have been the case, and that something worrying was happening. Local residents then came forward and said that the local wildlife had been behaving strangely, and that various birds were not active or flying like normal. At the time though, these residents didn't know that hundreds of thousands of birds were about to pass away for unknown reasons. As of right now, some of the affected birds include warblers, sparrows, swallows, blackbirds and flycatchers. Martha Desmond went on to say the following. A number of these species are already in trouble. They are already experiencing huge population declines, and then to have a traumatic event like this is devastating. End quote. Trisha Cutler, who is a wildlife biologist, said the following. People have been reporting that the birds look sleepy. They're really just lethargic. One thing we're not seeing is that our resident birds mix in with these dead birds. We have resident birds that live here. Some of them migrate and some of them don't. But we're not getting birds like roadrunners or quail or doves. End quote. Martha Desmond did say though that some of these birds must be healthy, as they have their migratory feathers, but said that something is happening after this process that is wiping the birds out, going on to say this isn't just a few birds, something massive is happening that's caused these birds to drop. Another thing that added confusion was that people suggested that it may have been the insects the birds were eating that caused them to drop, but the biologists noted that many of these birds were seed eaters, and suffered the same fate. As of right now, many of these birds are having tests carried out on them, and this is happening at the US Fish and Wildlife Service Forensics Laboratory in Ashland. The researchers there hope that further analysis will help them answer why so many birds suffered the same fate. Desmond said the following, Over 3 billion birds have died since 1970. Insect populations are crashing and this is just an unprecedented mortality. Scientists did say that one explanation that could explain why this is happening is that of strong winds, although as you can imagine this wasn't met with open arms, 
and others said that something else was at play. Scientists and researchers have investigated this phenomena over the years, and different theories have been put forward. Various things can affect these birds. This ranges from electromagnetic currents, to things like poisons. As some have pointed out though, if these animals were poisoned, is it likely that they would all drop at once and in the same area? In these situations, all of the birds can be found very close to each other. Some have said it's as if these birds were zapped, and whatever passed through them caused them to pass away on the spot. People have been putting forward their own theories as to why this is happening, noting that radio towers and radio wave emissions could be messing with the bird's senses, saying that tests have been carried out and it's proven that this does directly affect these birds. Zach Baggins is no stranger to mysterious objects and old buildings. He's built a career investigating the strange happenings of our world, and is a firm believer that we're not alone. He's famous for his paranormal investigation series Ghost Adventures, with some calling him a modern day version of the paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Baggins is a man with an extraordinary passion for the paranormal, and in recent times he's come forward in detail to some of the most intense investigations that he's been a part of. While with the Ghost Adventures crew, he went down to Texas to investigate the Goatman's Bridge. They heard first-hand accounts of how strange rituals were carried out beneath the bridge, and how for countless years various people who have been to the bridge have had bad experiences, with some even going on to label this place as a demonic hotspot. Zack said the following, There's some locations that I've investigated that I never want to return to again. Goatsman Bridge, the forces at that place were indescribable. We were going there based on the stories of there being a Goatman type creature. Once we got there, we didn't know how dark and demonic this place was, and how this entity would disguise itself as a regular person named Steve. After we started talking to the eyewitnesses, then we knew that something was really wrong here, especially when one of our female members of our crew got severely affected and this was a common thing for females to get badly affected in this forest where the bridge was. During this investigation, we decided to do a ceremony to see if we could summon this entity. I don't think that any of us knew that this event would trigger one of the most terrifying moments of my whole investigation career with Ghost Adventures. Something manifested and literally threw Aaron and injured him, and then something kept going back and forth to him, and then when it left him, he would drop to the ground and then it would go to me. It was like someone was holding a puppet on strings. The ability that this entity had to get inside me and cause me to try and hurt myself was the most terrifying thing. He continued with the following during the episode. Something in this forest is going to greet us. Texas has a rich all-American history and the legend of the Old Alton Bridge is a testament to this history, as the ghost of a former farmer haunts this area. The Old Alton Bridge is beautifully and historically constructed for footpath traffic connecting Denton, Texas to Copper Canyon. It hovers over a muggy river and is surrounded by luscious green trees and grass. It was originally crafted to bring horses and cars to the other side of the river, but is now unsuitable for modern vehicles. A nearby bridge was built to allow bigger rigs to pass through instead. However, its beauty doesn't match its dreadful history. The bridge has been nicknamed Goatsman Bridge after a successful goat farmer, Oscar Washburn. However, he was taken out by KKK members in 1938. The Washburn family resided in the area in the early 1930s, and was generally left alone and even respected by the rest of the community. They were a prosperous family as they raised healthy resale goats that were necessary for farming. The clan got wind of the Washburn family's success because of a promotional sign hung from the old Alton Bridge, and they were enraged. One night in 1938, they raced across the bridge to drag Oscar from his home and bring him to the old Alton Bridge, where he would ultimately meet his demise. 
The legend remarks that they went back for the rest of the Washburn family, but took them out in their home rather than placing them alongside Oscar. When the members went to see if Washburn had truly passed away, his body had disappeared without a trace. Visitors and residents of the area claim that Oscar Washburn's ghost still haunts the old Alton Bridge. Visiting the bridge at night has brought all sorts of stories to light. Some people have reported seeing a man standing at the other side of the bridge holding goat's heads underneath his arms, or even a half-man half-goat figure standing in the back of them. Others have reported more subtle instances of their car doors locking and unlocking unprompted. Even if visitors don't see the goat man, they have reported seeing glowing red eyes in the distance. Taurus and visitors have concluded that knocking on the bridge three times at night summons the ghost of Oscar Washburn. Interestingly, it appears that many of the claims surrounding the goat man hold consistent descriptions, with those that have personally encountered the strange monstrous creature claiming that it stands at roughly seven feet tall. Those that have laid eyes on it have said that it appears to be a half-man and half-goat, fitting the description similar to that of an ancient Greek minotaur. Many residents local to the region have reported seeing the goat man, with some saying that they were attacked by the creature itself, and details that it waits within the thick shrubbery for someone to walk past, before it launches its attack. According to the legends coming out of the state of Maryland surrounding the creature, residents claim that this goat man first originated from a testing lab on the Beltsville Agriculture Research Center. The story goes that a scientist was spending his time working with goats and furthering his genetic research. However, an accident had occurred and turned him into a massive goat man, and now this creature roams the area in order to seek revenge. As of today, investigations are still being carried out on Old Alton Bridge, with witnesses saying that the area is very much alive, and that a large spirit in the form of a goat man still haunts the nearby areas. Tom DeLong is on a mission to prove the existence of mysterious flying crafts. This topic has been featured heavily in the news recently, with people like Elon Musk giving their opinions on the subject. One thing that's come to light is that officials are heavily investigating this topic, having various different videos showing these mysterious objects defying the laws of aviation, with even former presidents coming forward and saying that some of these sightings and encounters can't be explained. Interestingly, a few months back Tom posted an interesting photograph and caption on his Instagram, but it soon got removed not long after being up. The photograph and message were saved by online users, but some couldn't understand why the post had been taken down, while others said that Tom may have been forced to take the post down. It said the following. In the early 50s, a man was claiming to have regular visits from spacemen that were the same entities that UFO contactees described meeting, as well as the same ones he said were portrayed in the Bible as angels. He said they put outposts in the solar system and had connections to Atlantis and Lemuria. He took many photos in the early 50s, no Photoshop or computers, but many were overexposed potentially because of the propulsion field coming from the craft. A man in 2017 wanted to make a 3D animation of the craft, and asked to borrow all of the photos and negatives from the 50s to help create the animation. Upon digital enhancement, within a black negative, this figure and craft appeared. This may be what the people describe as the tall whites or the Atlanteans, or the angels of the Bible. They glow, they can almost look translucent, and it's as if they're surrounded by an electromagnetic force field. But really, they may be walking around on Earth, just like men as the Bible texts describe. End quote. The post immediately created a discussion online, with some users saying that the photographs don't show anything of interest, and that it's likely nothing, while others came forward and said that they've encountered similar looking beings. According to local legends and stories, Shasta Mountain is very spiritual, 
and is said to be placed on top of the lost continent of Lemuria. Since the early 1880s, locals close to the region have reported seeing mysterious flying crafts close to the mountain, along with strange people who would walk up to the mountain and then vanish. Others said that these individuals actually live inside the mountain, and that inside is a lost advanced society. Amateur researchers who have looked into the topic of UFOs have said these crafts are particularly interested in volcanoes, and that every year photographs are taken of them entering these systems. The story of Lemuria is a long one, but according to those that have looked into its history, the Lemurians are said to be an ancient advanced society who eventually relocated underground, and since then this is where they've stayed. As mentioned earlier, most who have looked into this have said that they currently reside underneath or inside Mount Shasta. The Lemurians are thought to be peaceful, kind, hyper-intelligent and all-forgiving. All beings that lived in Lemuria worked together in harmony, were all equal and all respected Mother Earth. Many ancient writings throughout the world talk about a great flood that took out many different civilizations, and people who have looked into advanced civilizations have said that either they were taken out as well, or they were forced to live underground, and have since stayed there. Others have suggested that the Lemurians actually disguised themselves, and started living alongside other humans, saying that most agree that their general appearance is that of a tall human, with blonde hair and blue eyes. Doing a reverse search on the image that Tom posted doesn't bring up anything, causing some to say that this photograph could be the real deal. The overall appearance and characteristics of this alleged species reminds some of the tall whites or the Nordics. According to MUFON, the second most commonly reported alien is nearly completely identical to human beings, and this is in almost every other way except for a few key differences. Referred to by MUFON as the Nordic alien species, the Nordic aliens are reportedly aliens that have long blonde hair, so blonde that it is commonly mistaken as being white, pale skin, deep blue eyes, and typically males stand between 6 and 7 feet tall. Many who have claimed to have encountered the Nordic aliens, or have been abducted by the species, claims that the Nordic aliens possess advanced telepathic abilities, able to communicate entire concepts and emotions with their abductees, and instill them with a tremendous amount of new information. Although many claim that this species is kind in nature, with some saying that the Nordic aliens are preparing to save the human race via abduction, in the event of a world-ending catastrophe, there appears to be a number of apocalyptic and doomsday cults that worship the Nordic aliens in sinister ways. However, those that have been taken by these entities have said the feeling of being in their presence was something that they'll never forget. Scientists and researchers though don't buy into this idea, saying that these are just stories, and those saying that they've been taken into ships are most likely dreaming. Reporting that sleep paralysis can make you think that things are happening around you when they aren't. Scientists have also said that they've never found an advanced civilization living beneath Mount Shasta. Researchers have said that the government could be gearing up to tell us something, noting that things like Space Force could have been created in order to communicate with advanced species outside of our solar system. Former employees who worked for the government have also detailed that they're hiding information from the general public, and that they have decades-old documents that aren't being shared, saying that they show proof of mysterious flying crafts that are much more advanced than what we have. Believers though have said that people who don't believe in UFOs are closed-minded, and regardless of what they might think, we have evidence of advanced crafts flying into mountains and volcanoes, Space is one of the last unexplored frontiers for humans. Scientists, researchers, archaeologists and historians have explained many of Earth's mysteries, but one place that keeps us guessing is that of space. A.V. Loeb, who is the chairman of Harvard's Department of Astronomy, claims that he thinks he's found proof of extraterrestrials, and this came in the form of a strange space object that was detected travelling through our solar system. 
One of the reasons this caught people's attention is because it's not very often that you get scientists or researchers talking about this subject. The objects the professor is talking about immediately displayed some strange signs, and this caused astronomers and others from around the world to speculate what it was. The object was given the name of a muamua, but the professor has given some examples of why this object might not be a space rock, and that it could actually be a piece of alien technology. On the 19th of October 2017, we were visited by something that scientists couldn't initially explain. It was called a muamua, and astronomers first noticed this object travelling through our solar system. The object in question had come from another solar system, and people quickly started to speculate what this object was. It could be seen travelling around the sun and then shooting away again. However, after this it was not to return with them saying that the mysterious object had been in our solar system for over a century. The reason Oumuamua wasn't spotted until 2017 is because it wasn't close enough to reflect enough light for astronomers to pick it up. Even when it did get close it was moving very fast, and meant astronomers had very little time to observe it. Once the strange object flew around the sun it was going further away, meaning it was getting fainter and fainter, the astronomers' very last observations from Hubble were on the 2nd of January 2018. On the 3rd of May, it was then seen outside of Jupiter's orbit. Interestingly, amateur researchers have said that there's several of these mysterious objects flying around our solar system, and one was recently found by someone who was using Google Sky. The individual who found it said that it stood out to them because it looked very similar to a muamua saying that they were able to take a screenshot and carry out further tests. They revealed that the object in question measures over 1,400 metres, or 4,590 feet in length. Those who saw the image said that it looked very similar to a muamua, suggesting that the two may be the same thing. Although scientists have said that these objects are likely asteroids, others are not so sure and have put forward more out their theories. One of the reasons they did this was because it didn't act like a typical space object, with researchers like A.V. Loeb saying that this could indicate that it's something entirely different. The first theory that was put forward was that it was an asteroid. The scientists looked at the size of the object, which was 2,600 feet or 800 meters long, and around 260 feet or 80 meters wide. However, it was reported that astronomers stated the object was not moving as it should. They picked up on the fact that Oumuamua showed a really strong non-gravitational acceleration. This tells the researchers that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. Many people put forward their theories, one of which is that this object is extraterrestrial in nature. The fact that it moves like nothing researchers have seen before could indicate that it's under intelligent control. Most scientists suggested that Oumuamua was likely something natural, and that its acceleration was due to a natural phenomenon. The next idea was that this mysterious object was releasing a large amount of hydrogen, and this was causing it to speed up. Interestingly though, not everyone has agreed with this idea. Going back, a new paper was published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Thiem Hong, an astrophysicist at the Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute, has said they don't think the hydrogen idea holds up, and that it wouldn't work in space. This has caused some excitement as some have gone back to the idea that this is alien tech. After all, there's many strange properties about this object that researchers can't explain. For example, the way it mimicked a comet, but yet it didn't have a tail. Also, NASA themselves reported that the interstellar visitor is 10 times as long as it is wide, and that this aspect ratio is far greater than any asteroid or comet observed in our solar system. The cigar-shaped object is still debated, and it seems with this recent paper being released, we aren't any closer to understanding what this mysterious object is. Dr. Bailey from Harvard University said the following about the object. 
I wouldn't say I believe it's sent by aliens, as I'm a scientist and not a believer. I rely on evidence to put forward possible physical explanations for observed phenomena. It seems, however, until we have more evidence, we can't come to a conclusion on what this mysterious space object is. Ultimately, it will be very difficult to find out more about a Muamua, as it's no longer in our solar system. According to some, a Muamua is expected to reach the Kuiper Belt in around 2024. Loeb started to open his mind to the possibility that this mysterious space object could be something else, and that as mentioned it may be a piece of alien tech, and that it made its way into our solar system. Those who heard about the professor putting forward this idea gave him problems, saying that it's not very often that someone in this field has an open mind and puts forward these kinds of theories, so when it happens they should be told that is appreciated. When it comes to the universe, it's fair to say that humans don't know very much, and why would we? Modern humans haven't been studying the cosmos for very long, so how can you expect us to know all of the answers? Every so often a discovery like this is going to come along, and there's nothing wrong with having an open mind about what it is and where it's come from. As of right now, scientists and researchers still disagree on what this object is, and have said that we will have to wait for it to come back around again for us to study it in more detail. The goal of many space agencies at the moment is to explore the Martian surface, and identify if there's any life currently on or underneath the planet's surface. Various Mars rovers have made discoveries that have helped us to better understand the Martian terrain, weather and overall environment. These rovers even have onboard laboratories, meaning they can conduct a variety of different experiments while on the Red Planet. NASA said the following on their website. The Mars 2020 Perseverance rover mission is part of NASA's Mars Exploration Program, a long-term effort of robotic exploration on the Red Planet. The mission addresses high-priority science goals for Mars exploration, including key questions about the potential for life on Mars. Perseverance takes the next step by not only seeking signs of habitable conditions on Mars, but also searching for signs of past microbial life itself. The rover introduces a drill that can collect core samples of the most promising rocks and soils, and set them aside in a cache on the surface of Mars. A future mission could potentially return these samples to Earth. That would help scientists study these samples in laboratories, with special room-sized equipment that would be too large to take to Mars. End quote. Ever since the Perseverance rover was launched though, various online users have reported seeing mysterious artifacts on the surface, with one of the most recent ones being this one. It was shared to online groups that investigate strange artifacts on the Martian surface, and those who saw the image agreed that it looks like mold or mushrooms growing on the rock. Some users said that the fungus grew on the Martian surface within a few days and said that they don't look like pieces of rock. Others carried on from this and said that for years NASA has been capturing life on Mars, but has failed to further examine these photographs. Dr. Regina Das, of the Department of Microbiology School of Life Sciences in India, said that the photographs are interesting, saying the following, there are no geological or other forces on Earth which can produce sedimentary structures, by the hundreds which have mushroom shapes, stems, stalks and shed what looks like spores on the surrounding surface. In fact, 15 specimens were photographed by NASA growing out of the ground in just three days. Although Dr. Edwin Kind, a planetary geoscientist at the University of Chicago said the following, I don't know who reviewed the paper, but I would take away their license as a biologist, especially as a microbiologist. These features are well understood. They are abiotic features caused by saltation abrasion, or wind erosion. Numerous examples have been inspected by rovers, 
they are not fungi. End quote. Dr. Vincenzo Rizzo, a National Research Council biologist, also made some interesting comments about the photographs, saying the following. As we detail in our article, 90% of terrestrial methane is biological in origin, and seasonal fluctuations in atmospheric methane are directly correlated with plant growth and death cycles. The cyclic fluctuations in Martian methane is reflected of active biology, which is also depicted in before and after pictures of specimens photographed by NASA. Interestingly, some took this further and said that NASA need to be held accountable for not investigating these photographs. Going back in 2014, it was announced that NASA was being sued because they didn't investigate an alleged life form on the Red Planet. The original image showed what looked like a Mars rock appearing in front of the Mars rover, and when people saw it they claimed that it must have been proof of life on Mars. Mr. Joseph was one of the individuals behind the claim, and said that NASA should be investigating what appears to be alien life on Mars, but said that it's odd that NASA refuses to look into what was captured by the Martian rover. Mr. Joseph said the following about the image, it's actually a mushroom-like fungus, a composite organism consisting of colonies of bacteria, and these can be found on Earth. I want to compel and order the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and its Chief Administrator Charles Bolden to perform a public scientific and statutory duty, which is to closely photograph and thoroughly scientifically examine and investigate a biological organism which was identified and thus discovered and photographed on Mars by NASA's rover Opportunity in January 2014, and which NASA referred to in a press release as unlike anything we've seen before. We are totally confused. Although it sounds like an odd request, NASA themselves did say that the photograph was of interest. In fact, Steve Squires reported that the origin of the artifact is a mystery, and that he and his team who further looked into it couldn't explain what it was, and were baffled by its appearance. The team did say though that it's likely not a rock, but that it could be something like a meteorite. Another idea was that this could just be a rock that was flimmed. Online users though don't buy into this idea, and have asked NASA to conduct further research around the area to determine what the object is. As of right now, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration have said that these photographs don't show life, and that they have examined some of these alleged artifacts further and no life was present. Again, though, some have criticised the space agency and said that some of these discoveries have been left, and that they're only brought to light when amateur researchers happen to find them in NASA's Mars Library. NASA officials have also said that people should only listen to them and their scientists when it comes to Mars discoveries, saying that they're the ones who know about what's going on in and around Mars, and that anyone telling you that there's life on Mars is wrong, and that these claims are not backed up with scientific evidence. After the dawning of the space race, Humanity continued very little projects into that of space exploration, and instead used the majority of funds for continued space research. Due to this new initiative, it became imperative for space agencies to establish permanent space stations in space, to help with continued research projects. This led to the creation of the International Space Station, which can be used by all nations and governments in a joint effort to further research in all areas. Of course, attempting to understand a brave new frontier comes with a variety of strange and mysterious circumstances that researchers are still trying to better understand. One of these is the continued reports of strange objects that have been detected by various space cameras attached to the International Space Station. In fact, just recently an interesting object was captured during a spacewalk. Someone was watching the live feed and noticed that something came into view just below the astronauts, saying that it looked quite large and just appeared to hover. 
This isn't the first time that a strange looking object has approached the International Space Station, and there's some that have said that mysterious objects are interested in the ISS, and that if you're patient enough you can see mysterious lights approach the station as if they're inspecting it. Some online users though said they were surprised that the life feed didn't get cut off, saying that when strange objects sometimes appear close to the International Space Station the life feed camera cuts out, stopping the general public from being able to observe the objects any further. This object in particular though is an interesting one, because although amateur researchers have said that very strange objects can be seen around the ISS in a short amount of time, this is one of those times where the objects can actually be seen quite clearly. One person said the following about the object. I'm not sure what this is but it does look strange. I've seen the video and it suddenly appears in view. I'm not sure if this is something mysterious or just a piece of debris, but it's an interesting capture. End quote. Skeptics have suggested the object in question doesn't have anything to do with mysterious crafts, but is rather a panel that was taken off by the astronauts during the mission. Countless pieces of space debris are flying around our planet at any given time, and although NASA don't like it when astronauts drop things as they can come back to haunt them in the future, it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Although this particular event may be something like a piece of space debris, Amateur researchers are certain that some of these objects that approach the International Space Station don't fit into that category, saying that they've observed large objects that make sudden changes in direction, and that they go against the rest of the objects that can be seen travelling around them. For years now, NASA's stance on these objects has stayed the same, but in some cases they refuse to comment on some of the footage that their ISS cameras managed to capture. For those that are unaware, the International Space Station has a variety of cameras to monitor spacewalks and other areas that need to be under 24 hour surveillance. It's during this surveillance though that eagle eyed viewers have managed to spot strange things in the background, saying that these objects defy everything around them, and appear to have the ability to travel at tens of thousands of miles per hour. It's important to note that NASA officials have said they've never captured anything of interest close to the International Space Station, and that all of these reports can be easily explained as things like space debris and camera anomalies. Interestingly though, it seems that this attitude at NASA may be changing. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has said that he wants the company to be more open about this topic, and has said that NASA is being briefed about the topic of mysterious aircrafts. He said the following in regards to the increased reports of these mysterious flying aircrafts. Now that I'm here at NASA, I've turned to our scientists and I've said, would you, looking at it from a scientific standpoint, see if you can determine what these objects are, so that we can have a better idea. The bottom line is we want to know, and that's what we're trying to do. These comments have led some to think that NASA may be changing their attitude towards these sightings, and that they may be looking into these International Space Station anomalies with a more open mind. However, some were quickly disappointed when the Space Agency posted an update on their website. Interestingly, in July of 2021, NASA updated their websites and posted about the unidentified aerial phenomena. They said the following, one of NASA's key goals is the search for life in the universe. To date, NASA has yet to find any credible evidence of extraterrestrial life. However, NASA has long been exploring the solar system and beyond. To help us answer fundamental questions, including whether we're alone in the universe, the agency's astrobiology program focuses on the origins, evolution and distribution of life beyond Earth from studying water on Mars, probing promising ocean worlds such as Titan and Europa, to looking for biosignatures in the atmospheres of our cosmic neighbourhood. End quote. As of right now, NASA continues to deny these photographs, saying that although they look interesting, they don't show anything that points towards them being under intelligent control. 
and says that the general public should listen to what they say, further noting that they've never found anything of interest in any of their NASA recordings. One NASA worker said the following about these images. All of these can easily be explained as space fluff or camera anomalies. There's no need to research them any further. End quote. The world of mysterious crafts is an interesting one. Some will take you nowhere, and others will lead you down paths that will open your eyes to the strange things that go on in our world. Many of these stories and claims grab the attention of people worldwide, not only because millions are interested, but because some have experienced strange things themselves. Every year it seems that new information comes out about mysterious crafts, and recently many people who weren't initially interested have been introduced to the strange topic of mysterious flying objects. Someone has just sent me this strange photograph of a flying object, which can be seen next to a helicopter, saying that they found it on a Facebook group, and that they didn't know what to make of it, saying that if it's genuine it's one of the clearest UFOs that they've ever seen. The group it was posted to couldn't reveal much about it, and users were discussing whether it was genuine and what it shows. Reverse image searches didn't bring up anything, and everyone seemed to have a slightly different opinion on where the photograph originated from, with some people saying that the photograph was leaked by an insider, and was posted to a forum that discusses mysterious flying objects, while others said that it's just been shared between UFO believers. As of right now, some of the major UFO websites haven't shared the image, with users who are commenting on the post saying that this is the first time they've seen this photograph. One user had this to say, This is amazing footage of a high quality UFO. People are forever saying that we don't have high quality photographs of UFOs, but now we finally have one. It would be great if we found out more about this photograph, but perhaps more information will be revealed in the coming days. Another user said this, If this is the real deal then it's easily one of the clearest photographs of a UFO ever taken. The issue that I have with these super clear images is that something just seems off. I'm not sure if it was created using CGI or some other effect, but something just seems off. This is one of the problems when high quality UFO photographs are shared online. People immediately think that they're fake, because the mountains of UFO evidence we have so far usually show them as being blurry. Another idea people suggested was that this could be from a TV show or a movie, and that it might be from one that's not very well known. Regardless of whether these photographs are genuine, it creates an interesting discussion around the topic of mysterious flying objects, their origins and why so many of them are reported every year. One thing that's obvious is that it's not just everyday people that are interested in these mysterious flying crafts. Various different programs have been funded to study what these crafts are, how they're able to fly at the speeds they do, where they originate from, how their propulsion system is able to make them fly at the speeds they do, how they can enter restricted airspace without being caught, how they can avoid radar detection, and various other things that can't be explained. An initiative that was signed into action in July of 1947 was dedicated to studying reported UFO sightings. The project was converted into Project Grunge in 1949, and then Project Blue Book in March of 1952, which led to the Blue Room Theory. Back in 2007, the Department of Defense began developing a UFO research program, tasked with gathering information regarding unidentified flying objects, and conducting research as to the observed aircrafts, their origin and their technological prowess. Another place that was interested in these mysterious objects is that of the Civil Aviation Authority. The responsible for the regulation of aviation safety in the United Kingdom. 
It turns out though that over the years they've received various UFO reports. And what's of interest though is that these crafts were particularly large and didn't match typical UFOs. One report said the following. Over the years, the Civil Aviation Authority has received more than a few UFO reports, which is hardly surprising. Back on the 12th of June in 1982, large translucent objects 500 feet long were observed at 41,000 feet. Air Traffic Control Center requested subject aircraft to investigate this object, which was found to have the form of a double rectangle surmounted by a globe egg-shaped crowned by a silver cone. Object observed by all on board. End quote. The Royal Air Force also came forward with some interesting reports. One of interest happened back in the 1950s. Declassified Royal Air Force documents reported that a large number of unidentified flying objects were picked up on radar, with them detailing that every so often they were being detected and that it was almost as if they wanted to be detected, as they would blimp in and out. The Royal Air Force soon discovered that these mysterious objects didn't belong to them or their enemies. The military were observing crafts that were able to travel faster than anything they'd seen before. The objects climbed over 20,000 feet in a matter of seconds. There's no tech that they had or were aware of that was able to pull that off. The document stated the following. A second radar was switched on and detected the object at the same height and range. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this report was the size of the crafts. The military personnel said the crafts were much larger than conventional aircrafts. The military went on to say the following. It was noted by the radar operators that the sizes of the echoes were much larger than would be expected from a normal aircraft. In fact, they considered that the size was nearer to that of a ship's echo. End quote. All across the world, these large, unidentified flying objects have been observed. It's even more interesting when declassified documents reveal that they've seen the same thing and that some of our best pilots and officials can't explain what they are. Although many of these reports can be explained using everyday explanations, such as military jets, wildlife, atmospheric conditions and camera anomalies, some of these can't be so easily explained, leaving those studying them wondering what they are and how they're able to travel at the speeds they do. In recent years, we've learned that the world around us can change at any moment, not just because of things outside of our control, but also because of discoveries that we make every single day. Some of these include finding lost cities and archaeological digs, finding explanations for strange phenomena, or answering questions that have long left us puzzled. One recent discovery was made by a drone that was scanning the nearby marshes, A 75-year-old author was hiking with friends and family when he suddenly vanished. The friends and family went to police in order to try and get a search team, saying that the man that went missing was elderly, and that he'd gone missing during their walk. The officer called in various units to help with the discovery, including drones that were used to scan the nearby area. The search for the author went on into the night, with friends and loved ones worried that something bad may have happened, given how old the author was and that he's gone on various hikes before. Over 50 people took part in the search to find Peter Pugh, with investigators saying that he can't have gone far, telling everyone in the nearby area that the author must be within Norfolk, saying that he can't have gone far from where the hike took place. After not having much luck on the ground, The police then sent up drones in the sky in the hopes of finding any signs of movement. The officer who was in control of the drone then spotted something in the nearby marshes, and as the drone went in for a closer look, it turned out to be a human submerged in water and mud. Officers and responders quickly made their way to the scene, and it was confirmed that it was the missing author, Peter Pugh. Once they made their way over, it became apparent how lucky Peter was, 
as the officer said he had been stuck in the water and mud for over 20 hours and was suffering from hypothermia. Police said that Peter had been walking with friends and family at the time of his disappearance and it was around 5.30 in the evening that they became separated. After calls were made to the police along with Her Majesty's Coast Guard, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution and Norfolk Lowland, search and rescue began their searches of the nearby area. They worked throughout the night in order to find Peter, stating that it was important to find him within the first 24 hours, saying that it's rare for people to go missing for more than a day and that three quarters of them are found within 24 hours. However, they said that as time goes on, the chances of finding them decreases. Just after lunch on June 17th, the Norfolk Police drone piloted by Sergeant Danny Leach spotted something in the nearby marshes, which luckily turned out to be Mr. Pugh. Using the drone, the officer was then able to guard the rescuers in the direction of Peter, and also helped to assist the rescue service. As the Coast Guard helicopter arrived, the team was pulling Peter from the thick mud that had trapped him. He was then taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kings Lynn, where he was being treated for hypothermia. When Peter was asked about what happened, he said he didn't really remember much, but was very thankful for how quickly everyone acted, saying that he was so fortunate to have been found. Peter's wife said the following, He is doing remarkably well. He's sleeping quite a bit. His knees and legs were slashed by the reeds and now looks like raw meat. But he's a tough old bird and he's recovering well. We've all been out to eat and were heading back home when Peter decided to go off on his own for about half an hour. So we could go back and look at the seals. But he ended up walking into an area where he shouldn't have gone. And fell into some water and mud amongst the reeds. I think he was lying down in the end and up to his neck in water, but he was fighting all the time to try and get out. He didn't have a mobile phone on him, and even if he did, it would have got so wet that it wouldn't have worked. The Coast Guard helicopter searched for him on Saturday night, but didn't find any sign of him, but he had a bright pink polo shirt on him, and this is what caught the eye of the drone operator. Then the helicopter came back on Sunday afternoon to winch him out. All he can really remember is the voices of the people who came to rescue him. I just want to reiterate how wonderful the rescue service and the police all were. I think the drone saved his life. End quote. Sergeant Alex Butcher, who helped search and rescue find Peter, said the following. Through our teamwork, we were able to successfully locate Peter and return him back to his family on Father's Day. There's no doubt that without the police drone, we would not have been able to locate him in the time that we did. The police drone allows us to search areas that are difficult to access and within close range where a helicopter may not be able to get. Approximately 50 people were directly involved with this search operation and it was through their dedication and hard work that we was able to save this man's life. End quote. Hundreds of thousands of people go missing every year, and sometimes these people can vanish right under our noses. It's important to remember how hostile certain areas on our planet can be. Lucky for Peter, it seems that a pink shirt may have been the determining factor that led to search and rescue saving his life. This post recently went viral on Facebook. A man was driving home when he saw a deer, but as he approached it, he could see that something was standing next to it. Mr. Taylor said the following, When you drive by a ghost petting a deer on the side of the road. Once the post started to gain traction, various different theories were put forward in order to try and explain it. Someone went with the paranormal saying that the photograph appears to show what looks like the outline of a humanoid. Others carried on from this and shared their own stories of driving home and seeing mysterious figures in the road. One person said it looks like the being could be that of a young adult, and that perhaps something bad happened on this stretch of road. People who researched the paranormal said that it could be an example of a residual haunting. 
a residual haunting is actually one of the better hauntings to experience. According to paranormal researchers, these entities will let you know when they're there, but will usually stay out of your way. This is described as an event that gets played over and over. For example, if someone hears the same whispers or screams, or sees an entity walk up and down the same flight of stairs, this can be described as a residual haunting. This is one of the reasons why so many people report seeing this same event played over, with one of the most common ones being that of the mysterious lady in white. Some suggested a more natural explanation, saying that what people are seeing is a tree, but others didn't agree with this. Firstly saying that it doesn't look like a tree, and also questioning why the tree would be in the middle of the road. One person said the following, Everyone seems to be focusing on the strange apparition, but no one seems to be mentioning the deer itself. Something about it just looks off. While another person said this, Why does the deer look like that? This thing looks evil. These comments caused some to look at other possibilities, with users suggesting that these two creatures may actually be skinwalkers. The Navajo people of southwestern America have many stories of various encounters of their ancestors with the skinwalkers. Described as a witch-like creature that could turn itself into an animal, skinwalkers are quite frightening. In the Navajo legend, skinwalkers are called Yi Nagaloshi, and this translates to he who walks on all fours. Skinwalkers were most frequently seen as foxes, coyotes, wolves, crows, eagles, or owls. Some stories even tell of skinwalkers attacking people by appearing as a relative, or an acquaintance. The abilities of the skinwalkers are quite varying in the different legends told about them. Some skinwalkers could possess the bodies of their prey by looking into their eyes. This way they were able to control the actions of the people. Many believe that the skinwalkers are still present in South and North America, and some people have even claimed to have been chased by them. It's said that the skinwalkers are able to run at incredibly fast speeds, and they can cover a distance of more than 200 miles without stopping. It's said that skinwalkers are usually present near graveyards, and can vanish very quickly if they need to. There are many accounts of encounters with skinwalkers during recent times. Some researchers have tried to solve their mystery, but haven't had much luck. As of right now, people can't seem to agree on what this image shows. Another place where mysterious creatures show up is that of trial cameras. This image went viral back in 2018, with many people sharing it on Facebook, and claim that it was captured on a trail camera in Alabama. The story goes that a property owner kept hearing mysterious noises on their property late at night, and that whatever creature was making them they didn't sound like any of the local wildlife. The man forgot about the noises, but two days later he heard one of his goats make a loud pitched screaming sound. It caused the man to run outside his house and try to find it. However, his animal was nowhere to be seen. While walking around his property, he could see that large paw prints littered the area, and this is where his goats were kept, and he knew that whatever it was, it was just trying to get a quick meal. He wasn't able to move the goats as they were kept in an open area. The story then goes that everything went quiet for a few nights, before the same goat noises were heard again. Recognising the noises, the man once again ran outside to try and catch whatever was harming his animals. However, same as before, he was too late, and whatever it was had escaped with one of his goats. It's reported that this happened five times before the man had enough. He decided to invest in a trial camera, and catch whatever this creature was. Same as before, when he inspected the area, he could see large footprints. After installing the camera and waiting for a few nights, the same event played out with one of the goats being taken. The difference this time though was that the trail camera had managed to capture something. When looking through it said he was baffled as to what he was looking at. When posted online many people put forward their theories. 
One person said that it was identical to what they'd seen on their property, and they said that they think it's the mysterious chupacabra, an animal known for taking down small animals and draining them of their blood. Others suggested that the feet were more humanoid, and that it was actually that of the dogman. However, some say this story isn't true, and what the photo actually shows is a mysterious creature that was captured back in 2015. With that being said, the story is still similar, except it details a woman setting up a trial camera because a mysterious creature keeps coming onto her property. Researchers have come forward and said they haven't been able to identify the original source of the photograph, and claim that every couple of years or so it makes the round on social media. Some who have seen it though are convinced it's one of the clearest photographs yet of the dogman, while others have said it just shows a dog with some type of illness. Thousands of mysterious photographs are captured every year. The majority of these get solved by online users, but some of them go unanswered. One online user just posted this image to social media, asking users what they make of it, and whether they can identify it. The photograph was sent to an online group that focuses on mysterious objects, and also strange weather phenomena that gets captured around our planet and they asked what this thing is that could be seen hovering above our moon. The user detailed that they had just purchased a telescope, and decided to get it out and look at the moon. Once they set it up, they said they started running a program that helps photograph nearby celestial bodies, but said that they don't have the hang of it yet, and so decided to photograph the moon through their iPhone XS. The man said the following, I often skywatch, and decided that with the weather being nice I'd get out the telescope. I own a Celestron which is a pretty good telescope, especially if you just want to see the planets in our solar system. I have some great photographs of Jupiter, Saturn and the Moon. However, tonight I noticed that in some of the photographs there appear to be a large looking structure close to the Moon, something that I've never seen before while stargazing. It definitely wasn't something like a satellite, a planet or a meteor. All of these things move pretty quickly, especially things like planets when you line them up with the scope. Within a few seconds they've moved out of frame. If I had to guess, I'd say that whatever this thing was stayed close to the moon for around 90 seconds. The majority of the photographs I took turned out blurry, but some of them were clearer than others. I'm not looking to start anything, I'm just wondering if anyone else saw this, or has seen something similar. Again, this couldn't have been something like a satellite or a planet, as all these things would have moved out of frame within seconds. The photograph got the interest of online users, who started to give their opinions on what the man captured, with some saying that it could have been a smudge on the lens, or perhaps a drone while others went down the route of saying that he captured an unidentified flying object, saying that every year people manage to capture mysterious looking crafts close to the moon. Other users said that they've seen strange things close to the moon, but didn't think much of it, writing it off as something natural. One thing that UFO researchers have said is that there's no shortage of these types of photographs, saying that every year regular people manage to capture strange things next to our moon, and what's interesting is that the majority of these people don't have an interest in this topic, they just manage to accidentally capture an interesting photo, and just want answers for what it shows. Unfortunately, as with most of these photographs and encounters, not much information can be gathered, but with each new photograph it does create an interesting discussion around the topic of UFOs, causing more people to go out there and do their own research. Although these stories are interesting, and leave us wondering what the individual encountered, one complaint by non-believers is that we don't have any physical proof of UFOs. This is not strictly true. Going back, Tom DeLong and his To The Stars Academy came forward and said that they have in their possession exotic materials that were from a down UFO, Tom is a main contributor of To The Stars Academy, 
which aims to explore the outer edges of aerospace science. Tom works alongside the To The Stars Academy founder Jim Semivan, who is a retired Central Intelligence Officer. Semivan's credibility as an aerospace researcher, and being close to this Central Intelligence Agency, gives the institution headway as a leading investigative force in space exploration. The Academy has recovered a mysterious piece of metamaterial that is believed to have come from an unidentified flying object. The piece of alloy metal shows signs of advanced engineering that has never been seen before on Earth, or at least hasn't been known by the public eye. The team compared the material to other metal materials already discovered, and some of these were on secretive military bases and could not find a match or any evidence that the particular material is in the possession of American intelligence. To the Stars Academy, Steve Justice is working on verifying the authenticity of the material, which has proven to be a grueling process. However, Justice is confident that the materials could not have been faked, because the manufacturing that would be necessary to create such a metal is far too advanced for earthly engineers. Tom is very excited about this discovery. He's been a long-time space enthusiast who wanted to research UFOs and extraterrestrial life as a side gig to his career as a musician. As of right now, researchers who study UFOs have said that in the past 12 months, a lot of new information has come out about unidentified flying objects, and that more updates will be coming soon. Every year thousands of new UFO sightings and reports are filed, helping to get a step closer to understanding what these crafts are, and how they're able to achieve what they do. With the recent interest by officials, some have said that it might not be long before we're told some of the biggest secrets of our universe. When it comes to whether to believe in the existence of other life forms within the universe, most of us have an opinion one way or the other. Whether you're a believer or not, some cases have been reported which are so strange that even the most skeptical among us are left wanting answers. In recent years, Antarctica has provided us with some interesting discoveries. For example, researchers have just announced that a Martian mineral is found deep within an ice core and that recent studies under the icy continent have revealed that there's various different species unknown to science. In September 2020, scientists on a research voyage in the Southern Ocean made a stunning discovery in the waters off the icy continent. During their 50-day trip, scientists from multiple countries created scans of the seabed from the decks of RV Tangora, a New Zealand research vessel, this research was carried out in the hopes that they would find life in harsh environments, and that's exactly what happened. During the expedition, the team collected 4,700 samples, as well as 33 hours of videos and 8,000 photographs. While the deep abyss of the Antarctic waters at first seemed to have more in common with the barren wastelands of Mars, the team were lucky enough to spot a form of life never seen by humans. The scientists described it as having features like a hippo. Dr. Snabble, a marine biologist at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in New Zealand said the following. It has something quite interesting at the front, which sort of likened it to a hippopotamus. We don't know how common this is, but I have to say I've never seen anything like it before. It's discoveries like these that show us that we still have a lot to learn about Antarctica and its surrounding areas, and although these finds are incredible, sometimes it's the more mysterious ones that grab people's attention. Amateur researchers are of the opinion that melting ice around Antarctica is revealing ancient secrets, with some users putting forward the idea that at one point in time ancient humans lived here. In fact, teams of researchers said that going back millions of years ago, Antarctica would have once been covered in lush green forests. Although researchers have said that the most likely cause behind many of these discoveries is that of pareidolia, where the mind plays tricks on us and makes us believe that something is there when it isn't, others have said this isn't the case, and that more investigations need to take place in and around Antarctica 
to determine the true nature of these mysterious discoveries. One of the most recent finds that was shared this month shows what looks like a strange grid-like pattern in Antarctica, with those who saw the images noting that it resembled those that were recently uncovered in Guatemala. A few years back, scientists in the dense regions of Guatemala decided to use LiDAR technology. At the time, the only thing they could see was the dense jungle regions around them, but after using this technique, it showed them that there was an entire city beneath their feet, and that the jungle had been hiding ancient pyramids and highways for thousands of years. This has caused some users to think that across our world are ancient systems that have been lost to the elements, but due to Antarctica's receding snow, these ancient sites are now being brought to the surface. One of the users noted that the structures have straight lines, and looks like it could have been part of an ancient city. When compared to the discovery that was made in Guatemala using LiDAR, you can definitely see the resemblance. Other users said that all across Antarctica where snow and ice is melting you are starting to see these structures, and it's caused many to question whether this is proof of ancient highways and cities that are currently lying under the icy continent. Another strange discovery is this one that's been labelled as a strange triangular formation. Same as the previous discovery, this one was also found this month, and already a variety of different theories have been put forward in order to explain what this is. Some have said that the image shows melting ice, and that it just happened to melt in this strange formation, while others have said that it looks like it could be an old base. One user carried on with this and said it looks like an ancient base, and that the reason it's white is so that it blends into its surroundings. Amateur researchers who have spent countless hours looking through old images of Antarctica, and also things like Google Earth, have said that these mysterious structures can be found all throughout the region, with many of them being found near the coastal and mountainous regions. What they are though depends on who you talk to, Skeptics will say that it's just melting ice, and that it's melted in such a way that it makes it look like something is there, while some online users believe that these are secret bases. Others have said that it's pareidolia and the tar mines are making us see something that isn't there, while some online users believe that these are secret bases, and that they're carrying out research in Antarctica that's hidden from the general public. As of right now, these types of discoveries are still heavily debated. As mentioned earlier, scientists have said that the continent of Antarctica was once inhabited by a lush green forest, saying that this would have surrounded the entire area. Evidence of this can be found when looking at a team of archaeologists and researchers that led an expedition in Antarctica in November of 2016, that lasted for several months ending in January 2017. The team found incredible evidence of a lush green forest in the region, and this was after locating and identifying several different traces of fertile areas, and also places that had climate change in the past, as well as large amounts of fossil fragments from ancient trees, that dated as far back as 260 million years. This timeline correlates with one very important event in the past, the Permian period, also known as the greatest mass extinction event in the history of the world. Before this event, there was much more carbon naturally in the atmosphere, which created lush green forests all around the world. This large amount of carbon allowed many creatures to thrive. It also meant that our planet was able to support larger forms of animal life. It's interesting then to consider the idea that roughly 260 million years ago, the continent of Antarctica would have been a densely populated lush green forest, with a tremendous variation in wildlife and ecosystems. We've even found evidence of dinosaur fossils on the continent, so we know for sure that at one point in time there was definitely life living in this region. The Megalodon shark is one of the most interesting prehistoric creatures, mainly because we know so little about it. Although scientists know that it would have had one of the strongest bite forces of any animal, would feast on ancient whales, sea lions, turtles and other large mammals, and would dominate the areas it swam in, things like their true size, how they lived and what caused their demise is greatly debated. 
For example, over the past year, researchers have announced that Megalodon was smaller than they thought, only to take that statement back and announce that they think the Megalodon is actually bigger than their previous estimates. The general idea is that this giant shark could grow between 50 and 60 feet long, although some have suggested that the shark could grow even bigger. One of the problems that many scientists face is the same as many dinosaurs, and that's that we don't have much material to go by to give an accurate description. Megalodon's skeleton was made mostly of cartilage, but teeth and vertebrae of this giant shark have been found. Although teeth are much easier to identify than vertebrae, as many of these have been misidentified. Megalodon teeth could reach over 7 inches in length, much bigger than that of the modern great white shark. For years now there's been stories of fishermen and people who spend large amounts of time on the sea encountering their shark, with them saying that the creature can easily be recognised due to its size. Scientists and marine biologists though have said that the megalodon shark is long extinct, and that we've never found proof of a living megalodon in the modern day suggesting that one of the reasons why people think they might be seeing a megalodon is due to misidentification. Distortion in the water that makes it look like something is bigger than it is, and also tales that have been passed down generations. Many cryptid researchers have said that there's been sightings of these giant sharks, and that because sharks have gills and they don't need to come to the surface to breathe, spotting them is much harder. One recent sighting was reported by someone who was looking through Google Earth, with them noting that it looked like a sea monster was disturbing the water. To people's surprise, the photograph was taken around England, a place that's known for having very few shark species. Regardless, the individual felt that Google satellites had captured something interesting, and so decided to share it and get other people's opinion. Mr. Hobbin discovered the alleged creature while looking at an area that docks large bones, saying that whatever this thing is is clearly bigger than some of those bones. It's been given the name of the Merryside Jaws, and some people who saw the image said this isn't the first time that a giant shark has been spotted in the area. Many people went on to label it as an ancient megalodon, but not everyone got on board with the idea of there being a giant shark swimming around England with some saying that the most likely answer is that someone's on a jet ski, or someone's taken out their boat and left a large wake behind. Interestingly, Tom Cromwell, a marine biologist, said that he thinks the image is actually genuine, and that the creature in question is large, but noted that it's been misidentified and that the most likely answer here is that it's a basking shark, which holds the record as being the second largest fish in the ocean, with the first being the whale shark. He said the following, Although it's unusual for sharks to be found in this area, it's not unheard of. Water creatures have been known to cruise the wrong way up rivers and canals and become stranded, as with the whales that got stranded up the Thames several years back. Perhaps it was an old shark that was looking for a place to pass away. Although this is the most accepted idea, Cryptid researchers have said that we can't ignore the fact that the majority of our oceans remain unexplored, and that there could be giant sharks lurking under our ocean that science is not aware of, with some noting that scientists said this coelacanth was swimming around in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago, and scientists said they became extinct around 18 million years ago. But in 1938 a living coelacanth was discovered in the Indian Ocean, near the southern coast of Africa, Incredibly, these creatures have been living since the time of the dinosaurs. With this much evidence gathered by scientists, it's no surprise then that it appears that there's large tales involving the existence of real-life encounters with ancient creatures. It's creatures like the coelacanth that have led some to believe that there's a small possibility that the megalodon could still be out there. There's some who have gone on to question the true size of a great white shark, saying that modern day researchers will give a maximum length of 18 to 20 feet, but fishermen around Africa and Australia have said they've seen much bigger specimens, and estimate these are reaching almost 30 to 35 feet. In fact, the Guinness Book of World Records listed a great white shark caught in the 1870s, near Port Ferry in southern Australia waters as one of the largest. 
This great white shark was said to be measured 10.9 meters, much larger than any other specimen that's been discovered. For many years, scientists have questioned the true size of this shark, as no proper scientific process was used in validating the true size. The oceans are still very much a mystery. Every year, underwater researchers are making incredible discoveries, showing us that there's still a lot to learn about our oceans. Hiking through the forest is an activity that's enjoyed by many. It's relaxing and it can make you appreciate the small things in life. In fact, science research and daily science announce that spending time outside is good for you, and that living close to nature has a wide range of health benefits. That's of course as long as you don't run into anything mysterious. For years now, stories have been told of mysterious creatures living in the dense forest regions of our planet and that every so often hikers come into contact with them. There's a variety of different locations that are said to house these mysterious creatures. North America has the well-known Bigfoot, a large bipedal humanoid that's allegedly been encountered by humans for thousands of years, while Indonesia has the Orang Pendic, a humanoid-looking creature that's said to resemble that of a prehistoric human. Recently, an individual on Reddit by the name of Ms. Robin Hood captured a mysterious photograph while hiking with their dog. They said that they often walk through this area with their dog, but that this time something seemed off. They managed to snap a photograph and post it online, noting that this thing was much taller than they were. They said the following, It's strange because a couple of times while I've walked past this tree, I've seen something in the corner of my eye, and I look at the tree with a strange feeling, but yesterday it was different. Some who saw the image pointed out that the trees in the background looked strange, and suggested that the creature in the image was a Bigfoot, a creature that researchers have said bends and breaks branches. Another said this a really clear photograph of something strange, and that this could be the real deal. As of right now, the original poster said they plan to go back, and hope they can find out what this thing was. While many reports suggest the creatures are hostile, there is also numerous reports that suggest a more gentle nature. A vile stench is often said to precede them, as well as tree knocking, screams, or even revealing themselves briefly before vanishing. Despite giving humans signs of their presence, they have still managed to evade human contact for thousands of years, ever since the first reported sightings. The numerous signs are often reported before Bigfoot sightings, UFO phenomena is one of the most common. It's estimated that around 20% of all Bigfoot sightings coincide with unidentified flying objects. One account of a UFO in Bigfoot originates from 1888, and this was a meeting between cattle ranchers and a group of Native Americans, and it happened in Northern California. The natives had described three crazy bears that came down from the sky, and this was in a small craft. The craft left the creatures in the woods before flying off. Another report was made by a woman, and this was in Ohio back in 1973. The mother and daughter were both asleep, when around midnight a beam of light came down from an umbrella-shaped craft. Upon seeing why the light was shining in the woods, they noticed greyish beings walking towards the beam. Within a short amount of time, both the beings and craft had disappeared. The Central Intelligence Agency also investigated a report of a Bigfoot and UFO, and this was at Pennsylvania, and it happened on July 31st, 1966. The report was filed alongside thousands of other UFO reports, as part of the infamous Project Bluebird. Four tourists from New York were visiting the popular destination, when their car became stuck in the sand after a day of relaxing on the beach. Gerald LeBear was one of the four, and was sent to call for a tow truck. The other three stayed in the car and waited for help, until around 10pm when a police patrol car stopped to see if the group were okay. The group were told that a tow truck was on the way, 
and so the police officers said they would call back within the hour to ensure that they'd managed to pull their car free. After approximately 35 minutes, the police returned, only to be told by one of the members that they just witnessed something strange hovering above the woods. The officers, along with Douglas Tibbetts, went out into the woods to investigate what they'd seen. The remaining two members of the group stayed with the car until the others returned. The officers and Tibbetts managed to walk roughly 300 yards from the car before they heard the car's horn, which caused them to turn around and hurry back to the car. As soon as they arrived, the two women who were left with the car were visibly shaken, claiming that they just witnessed a dark figure, larger than a man, with a big head and wide shoulders, no hands or face visible, and it appeared that its back was turned. The creature was also heard to be scratching the car's roof, before one of the members had sounded the horn, which scared the creature away. Investigators later dismissed the report as being a raccoon, but the witnesses were offended by this, stating that they know the difference between a raccoon and a large humanoid. Another mysterious creature is that of the Orang Pendic. The Orang Pendic is said to be a two-legged ape that lives in the western islands of Indonesia. It's been sighted by the locals around the island, and also by foreign researchers. Orang Pendic is Indonesian for the short one, and it's proposed to be a species of primates that has not yet been discovered, possibly belonging to the genus Homo. Over time, so many people have reported seeing the creature, including travellers, natives and researchers, that many have gone looking for the cryptid, or accidentally saw it by chance. Orang Pendic's most common features that have been confirmed by the many sightings include a standing height of 2 to 5 feet, moving on two legs like humans do, and having grey or golden brown fur. The strangest observation is that these creatures have facial features that are more human-like than monkeys, which has resulted in the belief that the Orang Pendic could be a distant long human cousin, possibly with a common ancestor. From what the locals of Indonesia say, the Orang Pendic has high intelligence and can hide from being detected while watching people, making them fear it for its clever nature. These photographs have just been shared online, and they show what appear to be a futuristic looking aircraft. The photos are said to be taken at the site of the Helendale Radar Cross Section Facility in California. The individual who posted the images said that the site is operated by Lockheed Martin, and is used to measure a radar reflection of stealth aircraft models. It's not known who shared the images, with some saying that it could have been a Lockheed Martin worker, as they would have had access to the site, while others said that it's unlikely that they shared them on purpose, saying that these aircrafts are usually part of secret programs, and that normally a small team is only allowed access to it. The poster didn't go into detail how they were able to get access to these images, but did say that it could be part of a black project, and noted that the aircraft is very streamlined, and doesn't have any wheels. The user posted the photographs to a group that investigates strange objects and also stealth aircrafts, and some of the users suggested that it could have been part of the Aurora project. For those unaware, Aurora is allegedly a top secret stealth aircraft that was first manufactured during the 1980s with aviation researchers saying that the program has run into the modern day. In 2006, Black Project Watcher and aviation writer Bill Sweatman said the following about the project. Does Aurora exist? Years of pursuit have led me to believe that yes, Aurora is most likely in active development, spurred on by recent advances that have allowed technology to catch up with the ambition that launched the program a generation ago. End quote. It's for this reason, along with various sightings of mysterious aircrafts, that some believe that there's a top secret program within the government that's creating hyper advanced aircrafts. One user said the following 
The fact that this thing has no wheels and appears to be from the future makes me think this could be part of a secret program. The background of the photograph also matches that of the Hellendale test range. I'm not sure how these photographs have made their way online, but to me they look like they could show a classified aircraft. End quote. Other users went on to say that this advanced aircraft could be part of the Black Triangle phenomenon. Black Triangles are a type of super advanced aircraft that's been reported by everyday people for the last 70 years. It's unknown whether they belong to the military, as they've never come forward to claim that they're behind the sightings, but aviation experts have said that these crafts could be part of a top secret black project, and that these crafts are the most advanced aircrafts within the military. There is some confusion over what these crafts are and who they belong to. Some have linked them to mysterious flying objects, saying that these aircrafts are too advanced for humans while others have said that actually the TR-3B Black Manta, and that they're currently being created by a small team within the US military. As mentioned, very little is known about these aircrafts, and no military has come forward to claim that they're behind the sightings. For this reason, amateur researchers have spent countless hours trying to track down leads in order to find out who's creating them. One of the issues that many have faced is that these aircrafts are able to fly at extremely high speeds, hover motionless without making a sound, can hit G's that no human will be able to handle, and can fly higher than any other aircraft on the planet. For this reason, more out there theories have been put forward in order to explain what these crafts are. Another user said that the images could show a new type of stealth aircraft, but as Summer pointed out, the aircraft has no wheels, and doesn't match any other stealth aircrafts out there. 